Blades and Nairs, and welcome to episode 204 of RPG Digest. I am John Max Liao your favorite curmudgeon, critic, and judge. Along with me today, as usual, is Brett Heathen Dog Grismer and two little stray birds he asked me to let him keep, which he, <laughs> appa- which he apparently named Kevin and Sean. So, <laughs> welcome to the show. And I don't have anything after that. <laughs> I thought Heathen Dog <laughs> Probably should have talked if about you that. Don't beforehand. know who they are. I don't know why you're here, man. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Ke- Kevin Simbita is the is the owner and and current operator of uh, Palladium Books, and uh, Sean Roberson is. Uh, wait, is it Roberson or Roberson? I I always get that confused. Uh, my family says Roberson. Roberson. Okay. See, because w- I look at it, my br- my my eyes say Roberson. There's people but, that say Roberson. It's funny, and when I was but growing up, if my father met another person that said Robertson. We, he could always connect the family tree. Our family says Robertson. So. Yeah. So I, I, growing up, I would have said Robertson, but I worked for the Marines back in the early two thousands. And there's a general Robertson that uh, worked next door to where I worked. And man, they beat that into you, <laughs> Robertson. So I'm used I, to saying Robertson, but only because of that. I think yeah. it's because it's it comes from the Robertson clan in in Scotland, and Robert the Robertsons is a sept and a sub clan of the Robertson. Robber Baron. So from the border regions between, you know, English territory and Scottish territory. So anyway. All right. Thank you, Poly Robotics. Oh, yeah. I should probably get chat up. <laughs> I don't care about the people in I'm chat. A and propaganda machine dog boy. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a no OCC. <laughs> I know, right? It's great. <laughs> every, every single uh, uh, Friday stream I'm on with with Max over here it comes up it ju- it just comes up i uh, i'm a i'm a coalition apologist i'm like dude i'm not apologizing for him i'm 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 a i'm a, I'm a you know flag waving banner holding you know lockstep bastard with him that's that's what i'm that's what i'm doing and you should be too i mean it it, it pains me that you're not i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> the comments of the hosts of the Legion Myth uh, Le- Weekly Live Stream. <laughs> this is taking into account you are in a post-apocalyptic environment. If you're not in a post-apocalyptic environment, I'm yeah. sure there are better options. Typically, the riffs said, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, exactly. again, I've always said that uh, I prefer, even though I'm an after-the-bomb guy, I prefer... I prefer the coalition to the Empire of Humanity because the Empire of Humanity is kind of drawn up as like this weird cartoonish thing where I'm actually afraid of the coalition. As you should be. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> I, have to, I have to get my coalition shirt just for when they take over. No, I'm one of you. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's knock out a couple of things real quickly here. Let the people know what we're doing, because we're doing this a little differently today, but I want to thank some folks first. We'll just knock out all this nonsense right away. I mean, I, I don't care about Heath Nugs Week today, so and I'm sure he doesn't care about mine, so there we go. So uh, first and foremost, I'm extremely grateful that you are here with us today for RPG Digest, along with Kevin and Sean to hear what they have to say about gaming. That's right, we're talking about gaming. So I uh, sincerely thank you for your time and attention. Consider supporting Legion of Myth through the links in live stream's description. YouTube takes 30% and Twitch takes 50% of your hard-earned money, while Rumble, PayPal, Streamlabs, and Ko-Fi take between 0 and 5%. As normal, Rumble rants and super chats of less than $20 will be read, well, I would say at the end of a segment. We kind of don't have segments. At a a reasonable time after everything has been caught up, well, uh, those of $20 or more, we will get to as soon as we can without derailing the conversation or the topic. So thank you very much for your kind donations there. A uh, couple other housekeeping things I'm going to just knock out right away. We can get to some other stuff later. First and foremost, if you have not seen it yet, and I'll let uh, Kevin and Sean jump in on this one if they want, we can share. Oh, why did I do it like that? It was dumb. Hold on. Let me move it over there. There. Now we can see it. <laughs> uh, they have uh, the horror sale going on. And let's zoom in on all this. Get the rift. Dead rain. More dead rain. Is dead rain really horror? I don't know. I find zombies comical. Well, uh, they they do have a different take on zombies that I like. I mean, in 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 a, in a lot of the uh, the the last twenty years, zombies have been. They can hear you. They can smell you. But as long as you're quiet or you cover yourself in zombie gore, you're going to be fine, right? Now with these zombies, you're alive, so they can see you. Yeah, somebody actually made a comment on one of the recent videos saying these zombies are unfair because they can see your aura. How are you supposed to get away from them? Like, you don't. That's the scary part. <laughs> Hello, it's you know, crazy. like like shambling, shambling Romero zombies aren't really that scary <laughs> unless you get a hundred of them on you. 
But the, these things, even one-on-one, -on -one, you're like, crap. If I get too close within like several dozen yards of this thing, maybe, it's not only going to see me, it's going to automatically call another dozen to me. And then they're going to call another dozen. Then they're going to call another dozen. It's going to be a crap show. I got to run away. It's a great question here because I have a specific way I want to answer this. Uh, can you use zombies and riffs? Well, in the immortal yeah. words of Rick and Mo Rick from Rick and Morty, when he said, everything's in space, well, everything's in riffs. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <you> yeah. Can. <laughs> space is mostly empty, but everything exists there. Right. S same thing. Look at all this stuff that's on sale. I'm still scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Well, my friend said it best. He said, everything's a riff. Every Palladium book is a riff source book. Right. Yes. Exactly. That's exactly right. It can and be. The, the, uh, the, the conversion book is your middleman. <laughs> you got to have the go. conversion book. You have a middleman. It's like the, this is Palladium Fantasy, goes through the conversion book, and then uh, it appears in riffs. That's what happens. I'm still scrolling. There, did I finally done scrolling? <laughs> That was a big sale. They just, they just put everything on sale. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> no, but well, one of the out. things we wanted to do is is include stuff that was you know scary and horror horror ish uh, in other game lines, not just Beyond the Supernatural, Nightbane, Dead Rain. And I love the fact, uh, Heathen Dog, you brought up that that our zombies see you as basically glowing food. Um, <laughs> that, that's what you are to them, and yeah, it's it's hard to escape them. You better be fast, and you better be smart, and you better work as a team. Or, yep. But there's a lot I mean, of good at stuff. The, oh, at the sorry. very least, uh, you you have someone in a clock tower who's a really good sniper. <laughs> at the very <laughs> least. <a> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of books in here that are more horror based from even the Palladium Fantasy line mm -hmm. or, or riffs that, hey, you can you can cross the streams, you can yeah. move stuff in between. Right. Um, and sometimes it's just this, the simple fact of maybe you don't tell people what it is. Um, you know, if you had a Splugorth conservator and some bioweapons in your, um, you know, beyond the supernatural game and you just don't say what they are, it could be really creepy to your players, especially if they're not familiar with it. That's and true. I'm of the mindset that players are evil, not quite like heathen dog things, but players are evil and they'll cheat. So they're going to read ahead. Always change what a monster can do at least slightly. Or bring something in from a world they're not expecting, like Sean just said. Yeah. So look at Even all this. We've got Chaos Earth. we got First Edition. we got art books. we got all types. Of, I, I'm not going to lie. I did not know there were this many source books for Dead Rain. <laughs> did not know that at all. Oh, there's a ton. Yeah, yeah there's like a, six, seven. Yeah. Plus the game itself. Yeah. And it's fun. It's different. It's a different kind of zombie setting. I mean, I mean, the setting is pretty traditional. I mean, it's post apocalyptic zombies, zombie apocalypse, you know, yeah. zombie apocalypse. But the zombies are, are all pretty different, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, interesting. I mean, you've got your lots classic. Of different interesting variants, yeah. Yeah, you've got your classic slow-moving ones, but then you got the fast ones and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I don't want to really, you know, blow it for people or, or, you know, give spoilers. But there's a bunch of cool stuff that makes our zombies and our setting, you know, un uniquely Palladium. So check it out. And we'll, we'll try to announce that again at the end of the stream as well. I put the link into chat. I'll try to get that into the description. But there's one more, a little bit more serious topic I want to hit before we dive into the fun. This was posted on our Discord this morning. Um, share this tab instead. There we go. So Main Street Comics in downtown Marshall. i uh, guessing that's North Carolina. Sorry, it's it's one of our YouTube. Uh, sorry, our Discord members oh. there. So I don't know exactly where this is, but calling all fe fellow Magic players, graphic novel heads, comic book lovers, board game enthusiasts, and TTRPG friends like Kyle Navis Shop Main Street Comics and Games is located in the heart of downtown Marshall, North Carolina, and serves as a lightning rod for one's inner child in Madison County. My friends opened the doors in 2021 with a con concept and a dream to give rural community the ability to express itself in a space of creativity and imagination, providing a safe haven for all who walk through their doors, young and old alike found themselves a place within this community with the freedom to be themselves regardless of age, race, gender, or sexuality, no matter if, if you prefer Marvel or DC, or don't care for either, or wherever you fall on whatever spectrum 
you could call their shop a home. So due to the devastating flooding of the French Broad River by Hurricane Helene, we no longer have that home. The floodwater, which crested at over 22 feet, destroyed all the contents of the shop, leaving behind a wake of mud, toxic muck from factories up the river, wow, loss of livelihood, and a dream shattered. To anyone who cherishes their third space, anybody who just wants to help out, uh, help Kyle and Ava, Avia, I think it's Avia, uh, reopen their shop by donating, liking, and sharing with anyone who wants to help and restore the only comic book shop in Madison County. So there we go. Okay. Hang on, hang on. I, I have I have something to add to this because I actually have some knowledge of this, surprisingly. Um, my my sister-in-law uh, worked worked for FEMA for a long time. And uh, everyone may think, well, why, why are they begging for money? That's what insurance is for. <laughs> You, you pay the deductible and bickety bam, you, you know, you get all your stuff back, right? It's it, people think it's like magic. Well, after a natural disaster, you're not getting that approved. Nope. They will do the insurance company will do everything they can to say no. They'll make up crap and just just to say no. So it's well, very likely that this insurance is not happening. So I read that uh, in that region, flood insurance is also commonly not necessarily included. So I just want to throw that in there, too. It may, the, the type of disaster may not even be covered. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, flood insurance is incredibly expensive for, for where you need it and no one gets it for where they think they don't. Yeah. So that could so be I put, the, I put the link into, uh, again, I'll try to get it into the description uh, once we get uh, into conversing here, but uh, I put it into the chat out there. If you can donate, please do. If you can't, and, and they have a big PS on here. Let's be very clear about this. Uh, the owners asked that no one who is impacted by the flood donate. If they can instead share this fundraiser on social media and tell anyone who might be interested, be helpful in getting the shop up and running. Obviously, if you can't support because you're broke, That's don't, get, don't go more broke. It doesn't nope. help anybody. If you can support, please do, though. There we go. Uh, stop sharing that. Let's get this full screen here. And uh, yeah, let's start talking about some gaming stuff. So what are, what are we doing today? What's what's going to be a little different? So uh, we're calling this Gamer Talk. Look, I even got a nice little logo there. That's Kevin and Sean. It says Sean and Kevin only because Sean's on the wrong side. But I backed it up by having him being kicked in the back of the head by a ninja. There That's it what is. you get. <laughs> Uh, so, but it's, it's gamer time, and, and the reason we're going to do this is because they're gamers. Sure, they write books, they they publish products, they do a lot of business, but they're also gamers. So we want to talk about gaming with Kevin and Sean. Let's start picking their noodle about everything and anything under the sun. And the, and the topics for today are going to be what did I say? Uh, oh, sorry. First one I put out there. So th these are going to be topics that they want to address. We want to address, but more importantly, things that you might want to address. So I hope to do this once a month with them. I'm going to beg and borrow and steal and threaten children or something uh, sure. to get them on the show if we can once a month to do this as much as possible. But they have busy schedules and we have an audience that needs to show some interest. So if you are interested, if you're watching this on video later, especially, let us know. Put something in the comments. Let us know what to com uh, topics you want us to cover. What is something about Palladium Games that either confuses you or you want to learn how to do better? Or just want to know how Kevin and Sean do it themselves. Put that into a comment because we'd love to have them back more and just talk gaming stuff. That And, and what spurred this on, from my perspective, first of all, they, they brought up a good topic, but was the Techno Wizard co uh, commentary that we had the last time. People mm -hmm. love that. Some disagreed greatly. <laughs> it's funny. How do you disagree with the creator of a game? But disagreed greatly. Most loved it. Most said, oh my God, you just clarified like the entire world for me in terms of techno wizardry. So we want to do more of that. So our first topic for today is uh, going to be on, and this is just, you guys have heard us rant about this for a while. Actually, let me get the right screen up. Not me. That's not it. Weirdo. <laughs> not him. That's definitely not it. <laughs> There, we go. That there, is, we go. there you go. That's uh, it. So I don't know why number one there is supposed to be number three that was there, but whatever. Is uh, is Kevin, uh, one of the two brought it up. Maybe they both brought it up together. Sometimes you can't tell them apart. Is uh, wilderness travel and adventuring and survival in rifts. And both Heathen Dog and I were look like a deer in headlights. Like, what are you talking about? How is this a question that anybody has? Because literally every rifts game I played, he's played maybe way more than me, but. 
has been in the wilderness. And if you went to a civilization, it was just there to maybe gear up. Right. If you if you were lucky, you know, yeah. the rest of it was 95% going out of the wilds. of the world is guess what? Not a town. That's it. You know, it's, it, it's it doesn't have roads. <laughs> exactly. It's uh, we're, yeah. We're, we're not even. There's no highways. We're not. It's over hill and over dale, buddy. I mean, you're you are not. You know, I ninety five went down. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there there is no expressway. It's scenic route all the time. But from from what you have told us, most people hand wave overland travel. Well, uh, I, 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 yes. I mean, we get a lot of that. The other problem is I think they just don't know how to run it. Yeah. Well, okay, so. then. That, that's a great place to start. How do you run overland travel in rifts? Or how we would go. you run overland travel? No, I, I think a lot of people don't realize because, you know, some of the main places we talk about are, are heavily civilized like chai town and the chai town burbs and so mm -hmm. people think of them as these big metropolises or giant shanty towns or you know even if they think medieval whatever but yeah but these should be thought of as like little isolated oases in the middle of what i like to call the savage wilderness because you literally don't know what's behind every tree there could be, you know, aliens or DBs or monsters or a dimensional anomaly or bandits fairies. or yeah, fairies, right? Anything you can think about uh, it could be behind there. And, 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 and I want to throw out a point here, too, is a lot of people seem to think that that means they, they, they think, oh, well, it's in a coalition state. They control all the borders. There's like men lined up on the border they already cleared everything out of the entire state that's claimed by the coalition no not at all i mean the for instance chai town that's why the burbs are just hugging the 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 the, the silhouette of chai town is because they're just trying to like get a bit of that safety yeah from the that, that's the rapid response area yeah yeah you just took right. my question away from me so thanks <laughs> <laughs> no, you're so, right. I mean, I mean, uh, one of the things i want to emphasize is it really is. You go a few miles outside of, out of the burbs and you're in the monster filled wilderness. You're in D and D type wilderness. Right? Well, and even in the burbs, things can go rampaging okay. through Absolutely. it. Or, Stuff gets in the burbs all the time. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and the coalition, especially if you're, if they suspect you're a mage or, or, Oh, look, there's DBs in town, you know, under the hooded robe. They think who they think they're fooling, you know, they're going to blow the snot out of you along with whatever monster or danger there is because they don't give a shit. And, and so in a lot of ways, like, like you're not a citizen living in the coalition right. mega city. You're squatters in the their way. From time, to time the coalition goes in and purges the burbs of, you know, non-humans and mages and that kind of thing. So in, in a lot of ways, the burbs are not a great place to live. And yet there's thronging multitudes there because it's so much better than living out in the wilderness or in a little, even just a few miles home. away. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, Pitt, uh, I, I do understand that a lot of people think that, uh, oh, you, you look at the map in the book and it says this is coalition territory and all of that is controlled and monitored by the coalition. Like like they have some kind of great wall of China, uh, great wall of coalition all around their stuff with with ramparts everywhere, you know, and that just doesn't happen. That's not the thing. I mean, there, there is no such thing as a secure border in rifts doesn't right. exist. I mean, right. even, if, even if it were just the 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 uh, nexus points caused that to be a hogwash, but it, there there is no manpower because there's not enough men, or I'm sorry, liberals people. There, there there's there's not enough people to actually to liter to actually control such Absolutely. a wide area. That's why they have skeletons, but even then, right? You know, and, and dog, dog boys. boys. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm a coke. <laughs> no, it would be too much. <laughs> no, I'm, th th no, absolutely. So that's the thing is, even when you have the say the state of Chi Town, which is probably the most secure of the states in general, um, that means that y your farming communities they'll have an outpost and a radio and local law enforcement, right? Um, and, and Samus will zoom there the minute they get a report that there's problems, right? And, right. But, but 
you still it's still like calling the cops you know when someone's broken into your home you got seconds you know, matter they're minutes away yeah yeah it's, it, the, the, the minutes turn into hours right um yeah. so and let alone if you're if you're out actually towards the far-flung borders you you are hours away or you maybe you can't look the other thing is a lot of people miss this um and kevin talks about it clearly in the books um i i i i I coalesced it more. I think we've got it really well represented in the Savage Rifts books, um, just to be really clear. But I mean, but ley line activity interferes with radio transmissions. Yeah. You can't just go call up, um, you know, they need a, re a series of, say, repeater towers, like, say, at those different outposts um, for communities within coalition territory. You get outside coalition borders, you probably can't even get a message back to the coalition. That's why they have long range teams that go out and then come back to deliver their information. Uh, that it's it really is. A, the world is much, much, much larger than it is for us right now. Yeah, it, it actually says program. that in the book as well. When uh, when you, when when you look at the equipment and it says radio, it gives you a range of like five miles or something like that. And right. and ra even radios nowadays are like, dude, I, I if if I have a military radio, it can go dozens of miles easy. But yeah, it, in the world yeah. of rift with the with with the uh, with the ley lines and stuff, it just scatters that so much that five miles is what you get. And you don't have satellites. There's another thing people no, are really no. used to our stuff all uplinking to satellite networks, yep. right? And we don't realize that gives us global range on our yep. on our devices, right? Um, but that's another big thing that's absolutely gone. And uh, and sometimes some of the radios will say up to this range, or you'll see a larger range, but maybe that's without the interference sometimes. Yep. So yep. sometimes I will throw that out there, especially in some of the earlier books. Uh, you know, you might see like say a, a, a uh, a range that's a lot larger than say another range on a different radio, but the the game masters need to be a little savvy about that. So that that may not be counting interference necessarily. Well, and since right. we mentioned ley lines, I mean again that that's a, ley lines and nexus points where dimensional portals can open up. That's also why you never know what's out there. It could be something fairly benign. It could be something weird. It could be something that that's an entity. It could be some kind of spirit. It could be an alien from another world, a monster from another world, uh, a creature from another time, like like dinosaurs. Um, and that's what makes the world interesting, but also so dangerous, is that environment outside of those towns uh is constantly changing some place that might have been relatively safe just a few weeks ago might be invaded by god knows what vampires or strange creatures from another dimension an alien plague uh right uh or there could be like a weird dimensional anomaly going on so as you pass through it you're actually skirting through the edge of some other dimension and god knows what's in that and if you get pulled into that into world it, yeah. <laughs> i mean again that's why i always say you're limited by your imagination especially yeah, you're like you're like all the players are like oh man i just been ravenloft Damn. <laughs> <laughs> there you go right. well that's saying you don't want to live that's these cities are not built on the ley line nexus points because those are constantly under competition. Yeah, that, that's just dumb. That's like, oh no, a floodplain? Oh yeah, build my house there. No, right. man. Well, yeah, or dragon. Oh, it lives off of the ambient magic energy. Guess where it wants to live? On a net ley line or nexus point because yeah. that's where it has the most ambient energy. Um, and 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 wizards want to take that over too. Demons want to take over that place of power or, and reside there. Um, eat, whether or not they're more sentient or, yeah. or I mean, most of them are sinister. Let's be honest, but like you know consciously sinister um but yeah those are some of the things that it, it, when you it's not like coalition divisions are just operating with free reign and could just roll in anywhere um they they the coalition does have like rapid response units and stuff like that but that's all to just hold the territory they are claiming. cleaning yeah. clinging to yeah yeah, yeah that, that's and not specifically to help any territories people much that are no. actually controlled territory yeah. right right so well, and that's the coalition that's the that's the most advanced human civilization on planet Earth. Well, and, at the time, of the and let's not right? forget. Let's say your adventurer group sure. runs into something terrible near some little farm community or a little town or something. It has connections to the coalition, sure. and while they're fighting these things off or helping the people, saving lives, the coalition forces zoom in 
And uh, they're going to be very appreciative unless you're using alien technology or Magic. you've got some DBs among your group. Magic. So basically every Rift's group. Or two. Well, and it's it's kind of like, you know, in, in, in real life we have, you know, the cops might show up and you want to be careful if you're carrying, say you're concealed carrying and you're responding to a, a, a threat, right? Say there's like a shooter somewhere in public. Well, you want to be really careful when the cops show up. They know that you're not the shooter. So the same thing can happen, even if the coalition, even if the, you got you got a squad or a platoon or whatever led by some pretty relaxed guys who are like, yeah, we know in the field we can, we, you know, we can rely on cyber knights and every once in a while a mystic or something like that. And they'll like kind of let it slide. But if they show up and they can't tell, clearly tell who caused the problem, they might think you're the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, they're, like, 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 just like you said, uh, the, the leader of that squad or platoon, lieutenant, captain or whatever he's he's either going to be pretty laid back so okay yeah you help these people even though you're like a dragon hatchling and a ley line walker i'm going to give you a pass but yeah, you, you got, got five minutes to disappear power, right yeah <laughs> but exactly. then, then there's the lieutenant or captain who's looking for medals yep killing, right. a, killing a dragon hatchling that's going to get him a medal oh, yeah, so or he's, he's going to do it anyway Dragons or mages yeah, or maybe dragon for a his particular mom. reason. Yeah, right. exactly. there you go. It doesn't right. matter, but you know, he he's he, he's he's looking to be major, right? Lieutenant Colonel someday. Just, you know, right. so right. here we go. Comes or, back you know, in with they, head and the horns, and <laughs> you know, the the Samus flight comes in right where the troops are coming in an APC. The Samus overflight says, "Oh yeah, there's definitely a problem. We see a dragon flying over the town. We're going to engage." You know what I mean? They don't know. There's no chat. Do they radio the dragon? Does the dragon have a radio? Yeah, but you know what I mean? And this goes back to what talk, you said before. Dragon. Let's have a discussion. You know, that's very unlikely to happen. But uh, like, like you're saying before, though, you can throw the baby out with the bathwater and just take it all out. <laughs> oh, yeah. They might come in and say, I They're higher up. Won't care. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 uh, the, the uh, colonel or general that, that's ultimately in, in charge of, of that rapid response group that, that came. Oh, you, you, you blanket bombed all, all aggressors. Okay. Yeah, they're not going to question their, 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 their standing orders. You never know. But yeah, but yeah, I don't want to focus too much on just the coalition because right. Rift no, is no, no. massive, right? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. It's we're talking about that. the most civilized area, right? And still, yeah. you're you're you step foot outside the burbs. You're in the burbs. You're still actually yeah. in danger you're in the wilderness. Yeah, out, technically, right? you're yeah. in complete untamed wilderness and yeah. the so savage wilderness. What what resources would you recommend for people to properly utilize? the wilderness and travel through it are are there any specific palladium books or or pamphlets or napkins you've written on that that can actually help people uh uh create a an engaging and believable and fun overland adventure yeah i, I think there, there's a few books I, I think the uh riffs adventure guide is is very helpful um the riffs core rule book touches upon you know, ideas of where things are. Um, Rift's aftermath to a somewhat lesser degree. It's sort of the aftermath of the uh, siege on Tolkien and how the world has kind of changed and what's out there. Um, and, and then, you know, just sort of, I, I'm tempted to say common sense, but the problem is I think a lot of our modern audience uh, doesn't really understand what it's like to live in the wilderness or even travel through the wilderness. I mean, there's a reason why Vietnam soldiers, but platoons could only travel, you know, five, six miles on a good day, you know, 10, if there's, if they're trudging through the jungles and it's not just because, Oh, we got to go slow and be careful. We're not looking, you know, we're not going to get sniped uh, or, or walk into a, a booby trap. It's if you've ever tried walking through actual wilderness, see, and we're, I'm talking open field of flowers. Mm -hmm. It's very rough because you're getting snared by all kinds of weeds with barbs and, and all kinds of uh, vines. This is an open plane. And, yeah, and you have to watch where you step, you know, go for holes or a thing. Go for holes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and if you, if you do even just do a little research on like uh, American pioneers, um, it, unless there was an established trail, which, you know, even then it's very rough. Um, they forging their way through the wilderness and these are ex these are people who that was their life yeah. they were yeah. experienced right. uh, uh wilderness and uh, trappers and hunters and, and 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 fur traders and stuff and they still 
they, 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 they had, again, similar progression rates, depending on the terrain type, to um, Vietnam, you know, uh, units trained to do these things, right? So, again, Kevin's absolutely spot on. Um, I actually referenced a lot of that stuff. Um, one of the things, so I'll say there's a lot of great tables. Um, in a lot of the books about whether you want to do something like, say, a ley line storm or you, you, depending on the terrain you're in or the region you're in and other different things that can happen. Um, I know it's savage rifts, but, you know, for me and Kevin, rifts is rifts. Um, and so I wrote rules for travel. And I think it could really be helpful for a game master to just take a look at it in the uh, Tomorrow Legion uh, field manual. And I actually have rules for how to do overland travel by miles um, and different things that you need to consider um, and overall travel times and, and encounters. You can easily use that with Palladium um, just by switching to the Palladium style rules, uh, skill checks. Um, and uh, But it gives great overviews of those kind of travel times and stuff, yeah, depending think, on the terrain you're going through. Think um, of the Savage World books as just another resource. Yeah. And pick and choose, just like you do our world books and our source books. Take a look at some of the stuff and go, oh, wow, this book has a bunch of things, tables, charts, adventures, whatever, that would really help benefit my, my campaign. And I, 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 okay. So I, my intention was to take as much as I could from the existing plating material and, you know, the stuff that Kevin and other writers had written and put into something that I personally could use. And I knew that might be of help to a lot of gamers. Um, and we, we did a lot of play testing. Um, Caleb play tested a lot of it actually. Um, and, and it, 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 it really helped. So um, it's because it can be tough when you, you know, survival. So when you do survival, there's a few tropes you need to hit on. Um, one is limited resources. Mm -hmm. And, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can, I, I give rules in that book, but really it doesn't really matter. You just need to maybe make a list of what are the important resources. If you're, if you're faction, if you're, if your players somehow have, you know, a nuclear power generator that they could tap into re to recharge all their stuff. Well, then you don't need to worry about power or fuel necessarily. Right. But maybe they clean look, water, clean water, food, right. Um, Medical supplies, uh, there's repair parts. Um, oh, shelter. For your vehicles. I mean, shelter, from, exactly. from wind, from storms, from. And yes. I, I also want to touch upon something that, that you said, Brett, which was gopher holes, not just gopher holes, as someone <laughs> who's got a freaking suburban backyard full of gophers. <laughs> it's not just the freaking holes. It's like when you walk across their tunnels. Oh, they, they collapse. Yeah. Right. And yes. so you're. Yep. Just go down and plus out in the wilderness you're going to have all kinds of uneven ground and 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 logs that you know trees that fall and branches from a storm yep. and it's why throughout history people have always created roads or paths or even you know wilderness scouts would look for animal trails because yes. it's again even animals look for you know the path of least resistance Yep. And that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. You're talking about all this bramble and vines and, and roots and rocks and uneven ground and freaking gopher holes and everything under the sun. It makes travel really difficult. And it doesn't freaking matter if you're in a, you know, MDC armor and even power armor. Sure, maybe some of it you can power through a little bit more. But I want to touch upon the fact that I think everyone can relate to trying to run through water, whether it's at the lake or whether it's at, at, along the ocean. When you're trying to run through a field of flowers just so, or, or, or tall grass, it's the same way. You're putting in all this energy and you can only run so fast. It's like a third or a quarter of what you could normally do because you have all of this resistance. And I don't think we think about that. And, you know, when we go to the parks, you know, our parks are, are mostly well manicured. They're, yeah, exactly. Manicured. Yep. And, and, you know, but if you go off that main trail, that main park land, like I, I've got a nature trail park right, right off my, uh, where, where I live. And it, it's wonderful, and they got these wonderful trails, and you can go around this lake, and it's great. But you go off that, and you start to wander through this other stuff. I mean, there are places where you're walking along, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, look at all these fallen trees and branches. I need to turn around, or I've got to It's funny, Kevin, that you say this. Yeah. Because 
Uh, just a few weeks ago, we were having a, a little contention with, you know, various factions, we'll just call it, in the game Twilight 2000, but where you can see where you can go, the rain, and so on and so forth. I literally went to a nature park out here and took video and pictures. And on the paths, no issues whatsoever. Getting off the paths, exactly, exactly as you're saying. Now, anybody's like, well, you know, I was in the military, and uh, so was I. And yes, I can walk through that stuff, no problem. Really? It, theoretically you can when you're a team you can walk that no pl problem but everything that kevin said about you're slower you can count noise if that's an issue at that time getting stuff out of your way your rifle your isn't always is garbage just, what's that yeah it, but your rifle isn't always down because ah, stupid thing get out of my wheel whatever the, the point is is you're not as prepared as you think you are if you're in this nice four-person formation going step forward step forward step forward when you're on a freaking path so 100 percent agree 100 percent agree with what you're saying I, I want to throw out one little thing there too. Is you know you want to realize how dangerous the wilderness is. How you realize was it missing four one one? I think is what it's called. But like people who go missing in national parks and forests and stuff like that. And a lot of times they're veterans, they're they're experienced outdoorsmen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or they just walk off a trail, just a like a few feet off a trail, and they fall off a cliffside, or you know, get lost in a forest, and they find their body or never find their body, right? And that's there's no there's no Sasquatch. That's not the problem, right? It's, you know, it's not. They didn't get, yeah, they didn't get, pick get most of them at least. I, I'm guessing didn't get picked off by Sasquatch, <laughs> alien, or raiders. Um, but those are real things you need to worry about in rifts <laughs> because it's it's all that plus all the other problems that, that that come in a fantasy setting like a lawless fantasy setting like this. So yeah, just. Those things compound and can make it very dangerous. Uh, let me let me what? jump in here. Got got two of the same comments, but one was a super chat for twenty bucks. So I've got to uh, say it. So uh, Fr uh, Francois de Rocher actually said the same thing. So, but is, is Canadian really military? I'm just wondering. Just curious. Oh, stop. Uh, <laughs> Canadian military is is no joke. When, oh, when whatever. Don't finally leave the get mad. They're they're Don't treacherous. Don't leave the propaganda. But law dog, <laughs> real military. <laughs> as an infantryman for over 20 years i can promise you that travel through wilderness without a path trail or road is not easy and nothing to sneeze at it's difficult and exhausting exactly. and by the way we wouldn't bust francois uh frank's balls if we didn't get along with him wonderfully so yeah frank's good yeah people. Uh, i've i've always i've always told people that uh when when people think 30 miles away they think a half hour Yep. That's because you have a road 30 miles away. If there's no road, that's days. That's not hours. That's days <laughs> of travel because in, especially in rifts, you're going to go through a forest or two at that point because forests are everywhere because for hundreds of years, people weren't clear cutting anything. They, they were, they were in their, their little bigger gopher holes trying to hide from everything, want to eat them. So the forest came up and they're, they're beautiful, thick, well, it, it, luscious yeah, and slow. Yeah, most of our highways are built in the most accessible, easy to traverse places. Imagine if you were in a truck and needed to drive, you could only drive where there weren't roads to get to where you wanted to go in, in, in a uh, remote area. <laughs> yeah, the, that, going miles, around every day if you don't wreck your truck on the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I want to mention, because it was cool that you kind of mentioned 30 miles. So I have an old book from like uh, about the region here in Michigan mm. um, from like 1883 or 88 or something like that. I don't remember the exact, exact, the exact date, but one of the entries in the book is how excited people were because Ann Arbor Trail was made. It's a road. At the time, it was a dirt road. Mm -hmm. And now you could get from downtown Detroit to Ann Arbor, Michigan, which from the Palladium office is about 30, from downtown Detroit, it's probably closer to 40 miles. You could do that now by cart in eight hours. Amazing. And walking, I think it was, yeah, it was like 12 or 18 hours at a good pace. Um, you know, if you stop, yeah, it's going to take, you know, probably a day, but you can get there in a day now. Yeah. How exciting. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's a 45 minute drive. Yeah, from yeah. here, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's forty minutes, and that's um, and then and to stress the point, that's because a path slash road was made before. Then, you, yeah. hope you got some camping gear with you. Hope you brought you your hammock. 
Right. And if you're making eight, 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 mi eight miles a day, you're doing great. Yeah. If you wanted to, now that's the thing you say you were coming, cause it depends on, you know, how, how close to Detroit and Canada you are, for instance, but yeah, maybe you would still want to take a tent <laughs> if it was a 12 hour trip. Right. Yeah. And, and what if you hit a storm or something? Right. Um, because you didn't have weather reports. Guess what? Riffs, you don't get you don't get weather reports. You don't get no, weather reports, and it changes fast. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah that's, like again, that's the beautiful thing to think about. I'm glad you said that, Sean, because you know, we're so used to our modern conveniences. <laughs> I mean, we not hey, it, I know it's got kind of windy and 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 you know dark outside. Let me let me pull out my magic device and check <laughs> and see, oh yeah, 60% of weather. Oh look, a storm is coming in. It's about 30 minutes away. It's awesome. And I'll say that that is one thing if you do have a powerful wizard that has like control over storms and, Techno -wizard. and things like that, right? Um that could be a big deal too for a party yep. or a group. Uh, a techno wizard can pull out a phone and then have have the have the spell in there and use it like oh no predict the weather spell or whatever i had it right here on my on my on my weather prediction device like oh it's great you know like oh great that's good stuff but uh yeah until that happens eh, you you got eh, that's that's all you got <laughs> yeah so so one one of the things that uh, i was doing some research on a few months ago actually it's probably over a year ago now uh was on average marching rates for various you know eras because people keep saying things like oh the romans marched 30 miles so it's 30 kilometers not 30 miles at least that's what i read uh but who cares well, so you did so on established roads that, that that was exactly that's that's what i was gonna yeah, say that's like, why that, they were that, called road builders man they right they built roads that are still around today for the reason to move their crap and people from one place to another in a reasonable amount of time yeah, legions didn't move over just random territory unless they were forced to, and then they didn't move move far at all. Yeah, th then that was exactly the point that I was going to make. Now, one of the things I want to do, I think this is, this is great what we're doing, so I'm not going to interject yet, but I just want to so we kind of stay a little bit on topic here, is uh, as I kind of want to go through a step-by-step -step with you guys in a bit, in, in a bit, starting here and traveling there. But there's still a few more questions out there, things like this. How about the East Coast? I'm on the East Coast. Now, I'm not, I'm not a Rifts aficionado, so I might have some of this wrong. But my understanding is you got mechanoids out there and you have Archie out there. How does anybody even live in that? Like, how is there a settlement in that territory at all? Well, I mean, well, first off, I mean, the mechanoids were there for a period of time. So if you're playing in that those number of years where there was the mechanoid invasion issue, there could be mechanoids. But oh, so they're gone now. Yeah, I mean, as of oh. like, the mini war, sure. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, if you've read Titan Robotics, it, it, it clarifies that. Um, but uh, I just get yelled at. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. Like, if you read, if I talk about it in Titan Robotics. Um, you can just see what the state of the situation is out there. Yeah, in my mind, the mechanoid was the mechanoid invasion was a very limited thing. It might have even only lasted, you know, a few months. Well, it, that what, makes sense because if, if the mechanoids actually got a foothold in the earth, we're all boned. Oh, that, all that's boned. why it's it's one of the harbingers, right? I mean, if yeah. they got a foothold. If it happened, the world dies. Yeah. If you play through the events of Rift Sourcebook 2 mechanoids with, you know, working with Hagen, you could save the world, right? So, um, and yeah, maybe it only takes a few months to a year or so um, because he, it's kind of one of those things. You either shut it down or you don't. Right. Um, but I mean, otherwise, their uh, Shumerian Nation is a really good book or the Cyborgs Collection, which, ha mm -hmm. which has all of these. Um, and Rift's Aftermath talks yeah. about it a bit too. I mean, the, the, you're not going to see Archie, right? What you're going to see are the Shumerian warriors, but they mainly claim certain territories and they let people wilderness trappers and towns live within that area yeah yeah Arch archie's an interesting character so so for those of you who are not aware of archie archie is uh, back. archie is a uh, artificial highly advanced artificial intelligence that survived the great cataclysm the thing is he's always been very timid about what role he should take in the world so a lot of his stuff that he does is very covert um he doesn't like come out and say i am the robot god yeah. you know all about <laughs> for me he just no, he, he feels safe being the wizard behind the curtain you got it very yeah. well said and, and and so that's that's archie now he's got all kinds of little 
avenues of gathering information and spies that are both robots and androids and people who don't even realize they're working with or for him. Um, so he's, he's not this constant threat. Plus, in Archie's own twisted mind, he kind of sees himself as the protector of humans, although he hasn't quite accepted that role. It's like he feels like he should be, only human beings still kind of confuse him. And, you know, some are good, some are bad. What is good? What is bad? You know, he's kind of dealing of all these kind of things and trying to come to terms with that, even though he realizes he's in the grand scheme of things, he's, he's quite powerful. So he's yeah. not necessarily an overt threat. No, no. I, I, I think of Archie and, and his his place in the world as the, the old Lo uh, Looney Tunes cartoon where the, there's that big, huge baby Huey guy who picks up this, this little bunny and goes, Oh, I'm going to love him. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make him happy. I'm going to call him, him, and George, him and name and him George. accidentally kills him. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh, he left me. No, you crushed him like a, like a grape, you idiot. And that's what Archie does. He wants to protect you, man. But every idea he so far has implemented, has been disastrous because he doesn't really understand how to do it right. He's getting better thanks to Hagen. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, H Hagen's an evil, selfish bastard, but he he wants to live, right? So he's going to try to like push Archie down friends. an avenue where he can protect humans properly because that means he'll protect him properly and not Georgify him, you know, and it'll be done. So there you go. Yeah. And he definitely does not want to end up like Kirk. No. But, but whoever said, gee, how do you survive the East Coast? I mean, that's a question for everywhere. I mean, that's the trick. And it's earlier, Max, you said, hey, so so what like kind of equipment and tips should you give people who want to go trucking in, in, into the wilderness? One, I think, is to have a, a diverse group, whether it's an NPC uh, or an actual player Harry character. So, so yeah, you either want a, a, a local yeah. regional guide or a wilderness scout. Or both. <laughs> um, you probably want a mage. You probably want to have, you know, someone who can. A man in arms. You know, do uh, medical. And you definitely want to have a few uh, men of arms. Maybe an interpreter. Yeah. So, so or, let, let's, let's actually dig into that a little more because uh, I, I like that. And I think the game that we played when we were traveling around, we had a guide. Uh, it's been, sorry, it's been many years since I did that version of the game, but uh, one of the things that happens with things like guides or interpreters and so forth is that the players start to, and I'm talking the players specifically, not the characters, start to rely on that as the answer giver. How does somebody throw a guide in the group and not have that character just solve everything for the players or beeline them right to exactly what it is that they're supposed to do? I don't want to say taking away agency from the from the the players, but basically solving it for them so they don't have to do anything. Because I've seen players do this. What does the guide think? What what is what is what does our DMPC think? Uh, instead of actually doing it themselves. So how can a good game master implement that interpreter, that guide, uh, while still giving the players the ultimate? Hey, you got to make the choice here. There, there, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, first of all, my, my, my initial thought when you said, so what is the, what does the guide think is, gosh, he doesn't know, or he's not sure, or that's where you can throw in some exciting, scary stuff with like, well, you know, he thinks we're coming here, but the terrain doesn't look right. Or there's these tracks that he's never seen before. Um, you know, try to mix it up, try to keep it scary try to keep it you know and, and and your 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 guide it doesn't necessarily know everything uh and then what happens if he disappears you know he says hey guys i'm, I'm gonna scout ahead and you know they're waiting <laughs> and waiting and they're like uh well, where, where is bob <laughs> yeah <laughs> what you just said was was uh in in the horror movie there's always that one idiot who, who goes downstairs to get more beer and never comes back that's that guy <laughs> Oh well, crap! It's the guide. Don't let the yeah. guide go alone. You know. <laughs> well, and, and and letting I think part of this is yeah, it's great if the players do sharp negotiation and ask questions of the 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 people they've they've hired. But they're not going to be. They don't. You know, the game master needs to remember these people aren't going to be perfect about everything. Yeah. They're going to have their own 
in, in, in rifts, they probably don't read. They're probably highly superstitious. They've dealt with all kinds of crazy stuff. They might have. Um, so, for instance, um, I mentioned the highly superstitious. Remember, in the beginning of Indiana Jones, right? The guides are like, I'm not going in there. You paid us to get you here. That's it. Like, we're yeah. not going to go further than this. So a lot of times the game master needs to approach the limits of what the guide and locals might be willing to do up front. So it's not just the simple matter of, well, I pay you 12 GP a day yeah. and you're going to be my guide and you know everything. Right. Um, but they also have their own motivations and thoughts and, and, and worries. Um, and they maybe need to be pretty savvy in choosing that guide. That's not someone who's going to sell them out to the vampires in the vampire kingdom. I was or, just about to say that. I, I, I personally, I would have them role play finding this is all that role, very big role play opportunities. Scouts. This should not be and, just like easy street. And, and, and who who do they hire? Is this guy a drunk? And as a game <laughs> master, I like to have fun with my NPCs. I, they're not all knowing. And maybe, you know, the group's on a budget. And, and so, and as the game master, I know this. So I introduced him to, you know, the world's greatest wilderness scout. He knows everything about this land, but it's going to cost them a shitload of money. So they can't afford or, him. So they go. Or, or what? Or uh, you, you, you go, you, you find the wilderness scout. He's the greatest. He says he's the greatest wilderness says. scout ever. And, and you ask, you ask a whole bunch of people and say, hey, have you ever paid him? And it worked out, and everyone's like, "Well, no one's ever come back." But I hadn't, didn't hear anything bad. That's or, a red or, flag, bro. Yes, yes we have. Get him flag. out of town. Get him out of town. He's the best ever. Please take these people out. Right. Not every guide is Strider. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, 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 and then, so then, what I would do is I'd introduce a couple other potential guides, and you know, one would be some weird little DB who's like, "Oh, I can help you. I can. I'll and I'll I'll work for like." Just you know, a piece of whatever we might find, and and enough to just cover my expenses, like fifty, you know, how about fifty credits a day? And then it, that might sound good financially, but I mean, is this guy trustworthy? What is he? You know, where, like Sean said, is he going to lead you out and sell you to, you know, the vampire horde that's living behind the hill three miles away? I mean, or. So, some strange ma you know, mage or, or uh, you know, gene splicers or the coalition or God knows what, you yeah. know, it's like, well, I mean, like, and I'll throw this out there too. Like you, the, the, the journey is the adventure, right? So, so as the game master, this is general RPG yeah. advice, right? Is as a game master think, Hey, we're trying to get to this thing, but there's all these. And, and, and if the players, enjoy a certain part of it or you think it's important to the plot or earlier i was saying maybe there's different supplies right just make a list just jot them down what's important and then that that can be a big motivation but the other thing to throw out there is just that these you know these people again aren't perfect and getting to know them bargaining with them um all this stuff that that's that is the adventure right that is the journey <laughs> Um, and, and that, th that's how you don't skip the journey, yeah. right? We're talking, what we're literally talking about is how to not skip the journey and right. not get a shrift, right? And that's how you don't skip it. Is, and, and, and give it a can, in the story. They can run across things that will help them later, you know, bits of information or a stranger, or, or they witness from a distance, some guy doing something, you know, terrible or powerful or amazing. And then they, but they all hide and watch and the guy goes away and, you know, at the end of that night session, guess who they have to go up against? It's him. And you're like, oh, shit. And, and you laughed when I said, oh, maybe the guy's a drunk. But I mean, I, I, I use that. I mean, use substance abuse, use alcoholism, use all kinds of, I mean, so you're like, oh, so where do we go from here? What does this mean? And the guy's like, well, I don't know, because he was off drinking his you know face they're off human that's human yeah yes well, well I, can i piggyback on that because i i've actually when you said before that i'm not going in there because of the you know the superstitions and so forth one of the things that uh heathen dog and i have talked about in like other games is that it doesn't matter how rational because players always think they have the perfect rational 
answer for everything, and it's infallible and doesn't matter. I negotiated this the best way possible. I'm perfect in this. But sometimes people are just stubborn. I'm not giving you this tract of land, no matter what you think about it. I am not going to part ways with this. I'm not going in there. There are demons that shut up. There's no such things in demons. Well, guess what? You're about to find out. You're the stupidest person on the planet if you think in demons. Stop being, you know, because you have to balance rational with human emotions. And I know people don't like to be, oh, I'm emotional. You know, I'm not emotional. Yes, every human has desires, emotions, and so forth. We're not robots. And so, no yes, you are going to come across people. It's against their faith. It's against the superstition. It's against, I saw something dark and spooky one time. I just don't want to find out what it might be, even if it's nothing. Whatever. Right. Well, and I'll throw out, there was one time, um, it can be a lot of fun, too, to make these characters recurring characters and things like that. Um, there was this guy who was more of an art, like a illicit black market arms dealer, but he was just a dude that had a shack full of some guns and stuff, right, in this small town. But the, the characters needed some information from him and he provided it um, as long as he was paid. Uh, but later on, they ended up buying some weapons and charging some eclipse and stuff. But then they found out later on that he was passing on information to a middleman who was then selling it to Splugorth slavers. And so he's sitting there getting paid essentially off of slave raids. And when they figured it out, they were so mad. Cause they were like, I never liked that guy in the first place. Cause he wasn't a nice guy. You know, that's, that's yeah. the way I role played him. So you can have a lot of fun with that. And, and it can be, it can add a lot of depth to your world because yeah, you're not just zooming around magically across planet earth with your high tech or super magic stuff. You're, you're dealing with people in a very like grounded, gritty, dangerous, post-apocalyptic, savage wilderness world. Yeah, I, 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 I want to, and I hesitated saying this, but we're, we're kind of getting there because I didn't want to go off topic, but don't make your scout or native guide or the majority of our NPCs, don't make them wilderness scout number one, meaning mm -hmm. a faceless, nameless guy who's just going to take you from A to B and have a good adventure uh, at B, your destination. Think about who this guy is. That That's where we start getting into alignments. And I love alignments because they're your moral compass. So think about who this, this scout is. What is his motivation? What if some guy steps up and says, I can help you. I can get you from here to there with no problems. And maybe that's absolutely true statement. But the reason he's offering it, because he's actually a desperado or a fugitive of some kind, and he sees this group as a way that they can actually get him to there where he can get someplace else or make get a away from the law. Or, or, get yeah. away. Exactly. Well, now you're aiding so, and abetting also. You got it. And, and he's and, got a cyberdyne on his trail. And, 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 <laughs> and, so everything is going fine until you encounter the lawman or the cyber knight or the coalition or whoever the hell is after him and, and, and why and now all of a sudden the group you know have they befriended this guy are they going to defend him are they going to protect him uh, yeah, are they just hand him over yeah. you know what's their alignments how do they feel about this who are they turning him over to is, is people looking for him good guys or bad guys the, or uh, the uh, or coalition lieutenant look looks through his bingo book and he says wait a minute that's that's cut your throat jack what what are you what are you doing with cut your throat jack <laughs> he's on my deck of cards yeah, yeah what's going on <laughs> He, he's killed like like eight children, you know. Like, 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 oh, I didn't know. I just bought him as a god. Yeah, likely story. Yeah, right. you're, yeah, you. And and then you know, the, the, then there's the idea. Well, the wilderness guide, he is good. He does bring people back and forth. So so you know he's legit. But during the trip, he'll steal something from you. Nothing huge. A little thing because of his alignment. He's like, ah, uh, it's for me. You know, a little tip. It's a pre-tip. Because I am going to get you there. Now, what do you do? Well, do you kill him for stealing from you? Well, then... We, the, what's your alignment, then? What's, what's your alignment, number one? And number two, this is a guy who has gotten people back and forth. He is known as a solid wilderness scout. He is known as, as, a, as a solid dude to do his job. So now, now your reputation in that area is going to go down because you murdered a guy who was good at his job and who got you to where you want to go. So he he stole a hundred credit from you or an eclip or whatever. 
Is that worth someone's life? Dude, you're just a dick. <laughs> you know, well, to a lot of players, that would be worth the life. And it, but, yeah, but he a lot of makes players, really it would be worth killing him for 100 credits or an E-clip. Dude, I understand that life in Rifts is pretty cheap, but is it that cheap? It's not that cheap. And, and that's what we call, we always come back to this. It's the repercussions when stuff like that yes. happens. Yep. Whether they're positive or negative, right? They can have really big consequences, positive or negative. I, um, again, some of my players were really great about there was a town run by two different hover bike gangs, right? And the hover cycle gangs um, had a you know pretty good working relationship, but they're not the same gang, right? And they had different territories and stuff. But yeah, it was about befriending them and making personal relationships. And when 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 things did come to blows, actually pulling their punches or you know not handling the situations really adroitly, um, without going into tons of detail on that specific adventure. But you can have tons of fun with stuff like that. Um, and another thing that I did one time was you know the, so. Procedural generation, or at least thinking that way, can really help you. So, as Kevin was saying, these are people you need. I love to use uh, name generators, right? Mm -hmm. So, depending, and there's some great ones online. So, depending on maybe their heritage or cultural heritage, you can roll, and it, it makes the character feel like, oh yeah, this is a guy that's descended from somebody from Jamaica or from Alabama or from England or Germany, right? Um, and that does a lot. And then, uh, for me at least, a, a name, and for my players, it seems to really make a difference because different names have different feelings to them and stuff like that. Um, and then you get a decent physical description, and um, you know maybe some of their vices and virtues, and you, you, and, and their, and their, their, their alignment. You're like off to the races as a game master. Um, the other thing to remember is, you know, towns in in rifts. If it's not like, well, even if it is a big coalition city or something like that, but. Even if it's not, a lot of them they have they have one or two main things that they trade in. You know, do they have peach orchards or do they do lumber or do the, is it like in um, Arkansas where there's a lot of say oil drill, drilling and refining and stuff like that? So that can really define regions too. And you know, w w I had fun with my players. Yeah, they went and bought rations, but it wasn't just like packaged MREs. They went and got like a barrel of of you know, you know preserved Old herring or whatever yeah. and yeah and there was <laughs> there was some, some, some different meat and, and and different things like that and 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 this is these are the tools that are available these are the weapons that are available in the town and they're like well that's really random i don't want that gun or i don't want this but hey i'll, I'll take that laser cutter that, or whatever right so that actually moves me to to my uh not only our next segment a little bit but the next thing i want to talk about is uh is sdc weapons and overland right. travel. Well, hold on. That, that's going to be a whole segment of its own. Though. I know, I know. But uh, when, when, when you're when you have your party preparing for overland travel, you brought up buying food, buying water. This is important because it could be days or weeks be between towns. You know, villages are a thing, but they may not even want you there. Get out of here, you varmint. You know, you you're not me, so I don't want you here. That's a lot of villages, right? So you may not even be able to enter, uh, let alone trade for stuff. But uh, between towns, it could be days or weeks. You may not even be able to bring enough food. Do you have a, a hover truck? No. Then you can't carry weeks of food for five people and water. It's yeah. not going to happen. So you're going to have to use it. So uh, not only do you need a guide, you also need a way to get your own food, get your own water. Now, a lot of it is the support classes. They are the... the uh, the the wilderness scout the uh the vagabond the whatever who have a lot of skills like fishing and hunting and cooking you know i want to make sure that the meal i cook isn't isn't laced with salmonella and e coli well if you have the cooking skill you're good to go you know it's fine if you don't well <laughs> rolls your dice you take your chances <laughs> you know you, you be crapping out your guts you know whatever but uh, being able to get food and get water is important during the journey because you may not be able to bring enough with you and having sdc weapons to hunt with is an important thing an mdc weapon can turn a deer uh, a, a feast of, of venison into a uh baloney instant mist. stew come on what are you yeah, talking about yeah, you know like just just cr crazy nothingness you know so so having having these sdc weapons and and the ability to hunt and cook and fish and you know forage is very important and so these these occs that are overlooked in city and combat you know are important for 95 percent of your travel in this world stop being a douche and get one of them on your team 
Well, and, and the yeah. other thing is, is, is a lot of times when we look at this stuff, we think of, oh, well, that their backpack or their survival. Life, this is like in emergencies. No, 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 no. In rifts, you're going to be using those things. Your characters will be using them every day. They're going to be using that tent, that bedroll. That do they have a hatchet? Do they have a survival knife? Do they have a mess kit? Right? They're going to be using that every day to cook with and do things with. And you don't just as a game master don't hand wave that away. Mm -hmm. um, because you need to have a way to do all those things. If yep. the characters lose their, their gear or their supplies, that could they're threaten bold. their lives. If, they're, if their knife or their hatchet breaks, that could, that could threaten their life. If they have to run yeah, away I mean, from a monster attack yep. and they leave their, 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 um, you know, their fishing hook behind, and they're, that, they're bone. I mean, not uh, most people are not Rambo. You can't drop him in the woods, and, and he'll, he'll he'll kill a boar, turn uh, turn turn an old uh, moldy tarp into into clothing to keep him alive, and build a fire no matter what. You know, that's no most are not that. Yeah. You know, except of course for the wilderness scout. You know, he is that. You know, so you know have 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 Jack the wilderness scout on your team. It's a good plan, especially if everything goes pear shaped. And in the wilderness, things go pear shaped real fast, real quick. Well, well, well e exactly. And, and, and I think it's funny because I think riffs. I, I always describe riffs as science fantasy, but I think a lot of people think of it as science fiction. And it's funny because if they're playing Palladium Fantasy or D and D or some other fantasy setting. A lot of the stuff we're talking about... They do it really naturally. Right, is a no-brainer. But somehow when you get into riffs, which is science fiction, that kind of all goes out the door. And they forget all about all that, and they don't really think about it. And some of this is, is, is my fault, because I never... I wanted to explore the world a lot more than, than the wilderness part of the world more, define it better, and, and I didn't. You know, riffs was an instant hit, and it just took off. And a lot of the world broke, books, don't fix it. You know, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, well, and a lot of the world books and source books were just kind of, uh, I mean, some were, were, were planned, but a lot of them were just kind of go with the flow. This is what people want. People want stuff on juicers. And I got a writer who wants to write juicer uprising. Sure. Great. Do it, CJ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, great book. And, and it is a great book. But and, it doesn't and, define the wilderness. Yeah. Right. No. And so we, we focus a lot on the characters and, and some of the key locations. And I think the wilderness part just kind of gets forgotten. Whereas in an adventure game, we all automatically go, yeah, of course, it's it's wilderness and there's dangers all throughout the wilderness. You got to hunt and forage and all this stuff. It all applies to rifts too. Maybe start thinking it in a little bit more of a fantasy well, kind of kind of Yeah, absolutely. Because the thing is, is yeah, maybe one guy is a glitter boy or a combat cyborg, but not everyone can usually travel like that. Um, and 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 even they, you, they if you have a combat cyborg, you just you know plowing his way through a forest, um, then you know. And remember, those top speeds are overland. Uh, without any impediments or, you know, gopher holes or anything like that, right? So a, a, a lot of these things is that, yeah, well, are they just leaving the entire group behind? Are you plowing through a forest by yourself? Or do you think the biggest thing in the forest is going to come check on, see what's what's crashing into its territory, right? Um, and so unless you're going to just leave the whole group behind, in general, you're, you you need to travel with the slowest members yeah. of the group. And and most of the time, I mean, even, I've played a lot of riffs. You've played a ton of riffs. And I, I, I most of the time, you know, it's not like you have some mechanized group until they get much higher level, right? And even then, you've got to drive where there's no road. And, and, and I've yeah. talked about this in a couple of books because I had, I had a guy who was like, I don't understand uh, a player approached me at a convention. It's like, I don't understand what all the problem is. I have a hover cycle. It's MDC. I just plow right through those trees. I'm, I'm just cutting. Yeah, no, right you like didn't nothing. watch Re Return of the Jedi? It, it, it didn't work out for the for the. Uh, yeah, but that Empire wasn't an MDC bike. If What's I that? have the SDC tree and MDC bike, I can drive right through it. Dude, it's a hover bike. It's open. You plow when through you're a going tree. That fast, everything deals in Fair. You know, <laughs> MDC armor is great un unless unless you get your neck hooked on a tree and it's pulled off of your body. I'm sorry, man. The MDC armor is not not made to you know stop you from being Stretch Armstrong. It's not. You just go. No, it, 
Exactly. You're going to get knocked off your tree. The impact of plowing through that big redwood. Uh, yeah, maybe your bike is only scratched up and has a little dent, but you are splattered inside of your armor. Yeah, is there, yeah. Or you got thrown 100 feet onto the ground or onto something worse. Are there tree branches it, tangled up in your hover fan? You know what I mean? If you're not going I, I, I'm really glad you guys brought that up because while this isn't a segue, it goes back to a question that I uh, or topic I wanted to bring up before, and I think this all wraps together here, is encounters aren't just monsters. So you have things like falling off a cliff. Okay, maybe as a Borg, I can take that because I'm just a spine and a brain, and hopefully I, you know, my brain doesn't bounce around too much. But a normal person wearing armor, I don't care if it's got a million MDC. If you fall a thousand feet, I used to go camping on the Sandia Mountains in New Mexico when I stationed at Curtin Air Force Base, and I'm afraid of heights. So they're all dangling their legs off the edge. I'm like, nope, because <laughs> because no matter what I'm wearing, which is just BDUs at the time, but still, even if I was wearing armor, if I were to fall off that cliff, I don't even care if I'm wrapped. I'm wrapped in a nice car. Tell me how many people survive thousand foot falls in that. The, that that's the point. Is a lot of times, and this is a player, and no, this is more of a game master issue than the players, but players are you oh, wearing MDC armor. Doesn't matter, dude. You that sudden stop at the end is still terminal velocity, and you're stuck inside that thing. Instead of bouncing off the sidewalk, you bounce off that armor. <laughs> like, yeah, well, the other thing is, is even if you are, say, that cyborg or something, uh, or you're you know. A, fe a, a mage has feather, you know, feather fall, but you know what I mean? Like some sort of way that they manage to not splat Float. at the end of the fall. Yeah. Um, okay. You, you're in a region. There are no maps generally. Like if you have a map, that's a big deal. And you should have bought it a long time ago. It's not like, Oh, I just have a map of the region in my pocket. Um, Cause you can't have a pre-apocalyptic map and have it be accurate. Right. Yeah, so it happens a new map and it's probably created by people who are illiterate. So good luck. Um, and there's no like, photographic imagery that'd be very rare coalition type stuff right so now your borg or your whoever has to make a navigation check or else they're lost in the middle of nowhere with monsters right I mean, you know that's the other thing to think about is can they even get back to the group is the adventure now finding the last co the lost combat cyborg right that could now be the adventure yes yeah, and you, you need a dog boy to help you know that, and that uh, you know someone fell in the well, Timmy. Right. right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sinkhole. Sinkholes are are a fun one. Uh, you mentioned the the. You took my thunder in this one, but it's really great idea. The the plague is a, is another one. Some illness, sickness that that you're not aware of. How about this? Let's go back to the guide for a second. The guide goes off because this is what he does. Like, hey, I'm going to go scout ahead, you know. And he he's been trustworthy so far, but he comes across somebody who blackmails him. Or now, takes now, over his brain or whatever. Or take, you know? Yeah, like, there you go. Takes, takes over his brain. So everything was going well until, well, now he got paid to do something different. The counter doesn't have to always be player characters attack X, Y, Z. Right. You have environmental effects. You have situations that happen outside of you. Think outside that box. Have fun. You know, be somewhat realistic in my opinion, but have fun with it. And if your guy gets mortally wounded or heavily wounded, I mean, you need to protect them and combat encounters and all kinds of stuff. Something happens to him. That's or them or you know yeah. that's that's bad <laughs> because now yeah. you're in the middle of the no wilderness yeah, and you're lost. Not. You're immediately lost. Right. Well, and Max, you said one of my mantras: have fun with it. Yep. Have fun. It's a game. Everyone should be having fun, and and, and make it interesting. Make it, it, you know, and it also all always doesn't have to an encounter. Or, or an adventure it doesn't always have to be super dramatic and life and death. It can be goofy. It can be silly. It could end with just, it could just be, end with a joke. Yeah, it could be a, 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 a sphinx asking riddles. I mean, you could do anything. You know, have, have fun with it. Agreed. Uh, okay, so going to bring up, I got two more things. Let's Heathen Dog's got more, and then, then we'll try to just do a quick, just a quick uh, scenario. Uh, first one is, a lot of people in chat have been talking about is there a good book out there and so forth. And and I don't have all the, I mean, my collection of, of is Rift stuff is one shelf. At the, not even one shelf, because most of it's after the bomb and Heroes Unlimited. But Dino Swamp, that's where I think that everything that Kevin was saying before, like, oh, we didn't take the time to do some of this. Dino Swamp has everything. <laughs> I, I loved Dinosaur Swamp. I honestly did. It was It's my favorite world book for riffs for my purposes because of how I, I run games. It's got all of that in. It's got diseases. It's got traveling. It's got 
everything I believe in when it comes to a post-apocalyptic game, because I am that guy that I think that travel equipment and uh, um, and survival. I love survival elements in game as long as it doesn't turn into a spreadsheet simulator and it right. doesn't. Right. So, so I end up absolutely why I love Forbidden Land so much. Right. But let's let's talk about uh, well, if you've got a, actually, are there other books that they can look at? Because uh, somebody mentioned uh, Rifts Canada was uh, another one that it's a great one actually. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I, 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 we got a little sidetracked because that was one of your first questions. It was like which books? Yeah, Canada is a great one. Uh, Dinosaur Swamps a great one. Rift Survival um, Guide or Adventure Guide. Sorry, Adventure Guide. Yeah, the the Rifts Adventure, Adventure Guide. Is really good. Yep. Um, did you have any others or Th those are I would say the big three. Yeah, the one I mean the ones that I've worked on right now one time that, that I think could be really good is um, Empires of Humanity, the encounter tables and the regional tables. It, it, you can see kind of what's known to be in certain regions, mm -hmm. um, and that's really good. Uh, the, I love uh, tables, by the way, when it comes to stuff like that. So that. And then the Tomorrow Legion Field Manual is the other one, and that's where I I did. I mean, and, and again, it's it's not you know nothing's perfect, but it has the journey the journey rules, right? So if you want to have an idea of ways to do overland travel and stuff, it's got lots of material there and op and optional rules for if you want like the grading um, tools and other supplies um, that can be really good for for handling stuff like that. Yeah, and Adventure Guide even has a, uh, a small section on uh, rifts mm -hmm. and, and how they're, they're not just always just, oh, look, a portal's opening up to God knows where. There are other phenomena and things that can happen with rifts and ley line storms. That kind no, of it's thing. super fun. Yeah. And it's uh, funny you say that because you just reminded me Dinosaur Swamp has it. Because you mentioned earlier about, you know, we could be pulled into Ravenloft, right? Well, guess what? Dinosaur Swamp has that crap built right into it. Like, wait a minute. I'm not a normal Earth anymore. My sun isn't orange. What just happened? <laughs> there's time holes, right? Yeah. I mean, there's all types of weird stuff. Yep. So so an interesting thing, um, and, and something one of you said earlier kind of triggered it in my mind. So there, there's like a fav fa there's like a famous... Michigan uh, story that a lot of uh, a lot of people, modern researchers and UFOologists or whatever they call themselves these days, point to as either um, an example of, of a dimensional rift or of alien abduction. But this this guy, very, really skilled when walking out in the middle of nowhere, but I mean, just this vast open area. In fact, I think he was walking across a lake, a frozen lake, and you could follow his footsteps. You could see his footprints in the snow, and they just stop. And he's gone. And nobody knew what happened to him. And they, you know, there, there were different theories. What if he broke through the, the, the ice, although there was no evidence of that whatsoever. Uh, I mean, what the hell happened to him? And he shows up, I want to say it's two or three years later. It might have only been a year, but he just like appears in some other state entirely. He's got no recollection of what's happened. He's just suddenly in this other place going in the summertime going, what the hell? Where am I? How did I get here? And they're like, who the hell are you? How did you get here? He's I asked you first, you know, <laughs> and, 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 it's it's a real documented event, and if that kind of stuff's not going to happen in rifts, I don't know where it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just you know, have again, have fun with it, think about it, and then consequences. Game masters, yes, everything should have a consequence, little and small. You know, it, big, it doesn't matter. Just there's always going to be a consequence. Um, and 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 as a game master, throw in fun, silly things. Um, that can turn into other stuff and then go with it. Be Try to be flexible and go with the flow. I think I've, I don't know if I told the story here, but I've told the story a few times, certainly at conventions. This was in my fantasy game. I had this particular uh, player who uh, I let them bring in their stuff and we were playing D&D &D at the time or D&D &D, Palladium Fantasy Hybrid. And this guy had all kinds of magic stuff, a magic armor, a magic gauntlets, a sword of God knows what. <laughs> dwarf and, and and you know you turn off the lights and you could read by the glowing of his magical <laughs> light. And, and he's kind of a badass and he's kind of cocky and 
because he thinks he's pretty invulnerable. And, and I always find those as challenges as a game master. And so he decides, because we're kind of playing, we're on a wilderness journey. We're walking through the wilderness, and he decides his character has to go to the bathroom. And so he walks off behind some bush, and he's going to take a leak. And a fairy shows up. And this fairy's like, hi, what are you doing? And the guy's like, I'm taking a piss. Can I get some privacy? And they're like, what do you mean? And, you know, and the fairy's just being kind of cute and annoying to this guy, apparently. And so he pees on the fairy. <laughs> That's always going to be great. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. And, 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 and hasn't he watched Willow? In <laughs> <laughs> right. fairness, I'm not sure Willow had come out yet, but <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and yeah, this leads to a whole mishap that ends up dragging half the group into it because the fairy's angry and it's like, "What do you do that for? You're ugh, you're a pig, yeah, you know." And it's like he charms the guy. And makes him strip naked and then does the fairy dance. And the rest of the group comes in to try to stop it. And of course, there's a fairy mound nearby, and a bunch of other fairies show up and are like, What are you doing? And it's like, This guy peed on me, and these guys are chasing me. And they're like, Oh, yeah. And next thing you know, half the group, bear in mind, this is when I'm running 26 guys, half the group is naked, <laughs> dancing around this fairy mound. The other half is trying to we're sorry can we negotiate something here and, and the fairy's like yeah we like you would you like some wine or some food and they're like they didn't know about fairy magic and food oh, no. shit up at, as i'm going right this is the first time they've encountered this kind of stuff and, and, and but i mean i knew myths and and things and from the real world and so yeah one of them turns purple next thing you know one of them is floating up into the air and he's afraid he's going to float away and he's trying to grab under branches and <laughs> It was this epic adventure, and you guys are really walking nonsense going on now. Stupid Daikini. (laughs) And it was great, and that's a great example of this wasn't an earth-shattering event. This this didn't have any major impact on what the rest of the the adventure was whatsoever. It was just a fun, silly side adventure that I just kind of ran with as it was unraveling. So, so uh, about that story. So, normally a, a story like that, I just kind of roll my eyes because I don't like goofy in my games. I'm that guy that they like to say Max doesn't like to have fun when he plays. But here's the caveat to that: they're fairies. That's what they do. It makes perfect right. sense. I'm 100 percent on board with that story. I would have had a great time with it. Hopefully, I was not one of them that was you know being turned purple or whatever. But you know, it's just like when Bear ran his game, and you know everybody's like, "Oh, dream sequences are horrible." Well, it wasn't a dream sequence. It was a bunch of illusions, and we were wrapped up in it, and it made perfect sense for what was happening at the time. As long as it makes sense, that's exactly what you need to do to somebody like a dwarf. It's like ah. And afraid of nothing. Well, guess what? A little tiny fairy just messed up your day. Well, and the other thing is, is it's it, it rides that line between. I mean, it's it's it seems Looney Tunes, but someone could get splattered like the Wiley Coyote, right? So this guy that's flying up into the air, if that if he does fly up really high and then it wears off quickly, mm-hmm. then he could he could get injured or killed, right? And and that's the thing is yep. the that you have to you can play it. It can be you know, especially with fairies, I think it's appropriate. You play it mm-hmm. with that edge. That some of them are 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 fun tricksters, but maybe some of them are, are menacing and like, well, if this if the the stupid humans don't figure it out, then they then they deserve to die, right? Or I also oops, I didn't know you couldn't fly, right? right. Because they wouldn't know, right? Yeah, maybe everyone can fly, duh, right? I also want to point out because because one of the things I often get asked is what happens if you accidentally let a character get too overpowered and he's imbalancing your game with some of the crap he has. Right. This was an opportunity for me to eliminate some of that because the fairies said, all right, we've had our fun and we like these other guys who didn't pee on us and who were friendly (laughs) and nice. And so uh, we're going to let you guys all gather up most of your stuff, but gee, we really like this, and we like these shiny stones, and uh, gee, those, those, we love wine. We're fairies, you know. We love wine, so we're going to keep your wine skins, and this magic sword, and those magic gauntlets, and this and that, and other thing. 
and the group wasn't too thrilled about it. But no, no, there's that one OP guy's like, no, that's all my stuff that makes me OP. Dude, shut up. Shut no, actually, it was hilarious up. because he, uh, he, it was almost like a phobia right into the game. The minute a fairy showed up, he's like, be nice to it. <laughs> <laughs> You mean you no know harm, friend? He always carried like like maple candies and some honey mm-hmm. in case he ran into a fairy. So here you go, buddy. You know we're just passing through. Maybe you could help us. Don't hurt me. Well, so so maybe maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong in this one. But that sounds like somebody who is a good player. And here's why I say that because Heathen Dog and I have run into players who absolutely be like, you know what? You just took a, this is a stupid GM trick just to take all my crap away from me. This is BS. You know, we've actually run into players like that. And while most of my players haven't been, uh, what about the players who would think that way? Now, again, we're still staying on the top of exploring and so forth, but when you got a player that looks, okay, you another sinkhole. Okay, you shouldn't be boring and do that all over. But you get what I'm saying. Like, oh look, it's a sinkhole. Oh look, it's something trying to eat from me from the sky. Oh look, some pair, some fairies taking all our crap. Yay, this is fun adventuring. What do you say to the people who would get annoyed by that? Well, first of all, I, I mean that's where it gets a little tricky for a game master. You want to make it fun. You want to make it interesting, and you want to make it make sense. If if something just zooms in and steals your shit, that's not fun. Especially if you have no way of stopping it. But in the story I just told you, it made total sense, and they were happy to get out with, with their lives <laughs> and and most of their property, uh, and, and, and it all made sense. You know, plausibility and, and the appearance of fairness uh, is, is really important, I think. Uh, yeah, no one likes to just have some giant come in and says, give me your magic shit or I'll kill you all. And you go, okay, here you go. Please don't hurt us. That's not fun. But you know, they, 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 in fact, one of the things that happened with this is one of the fairies liked them so much. In fact, he liked the, the dwarf that he had, who had peed on him because he had so, so much fun. The group could had so much fun of the people making them dance until they, they fell from exhaustion. And, you know, fairies are these anarchist, weird little critters that the one fairy said, tell you what, I like you guys. I like you guys. I'll take you to where you want to go. And he joined the group and became one of them for like three or four adventures only. Um, then things got too scary and violent for him. He's like, man, you guys are like serious. I don't know, man. You're, <laughs> you're killing things and fighting monsters and demons. Which and- again makes sense for fairies. I like this. It's like, well, this is getting a little too heavy, man. I got to. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know, I know that this discussion is aimed at riffs, right? But mm-hmm. it, it really applies to Palladium Fantasy or D sure. or, or anything you can be yeah, playing, right? It could any game where there's 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 you know unchecked wilderness um and, and then mysterious wilderness out there. But remember that you do want to have that buy-in from the players at the beginning. Look, if they want to play yeah. something more like say Robotech or Phase World, where you're just using giant robots and spaceships and blowing stuff up. That's cool. Right. And maybe that means that maybe that player shouldn't be, you know, or the game session shouldn't be riffs. Right. Because some people will maybe they'll be like, Oh, it's giant robots. I'm going to go play a giant robots game. Uh, It might be a little different than what you're expecting. But if you can discuss those things at the beginning and also get feedback from your players at the end of your sessions, um, then that could be a really good way to kind of see what they're getting into. And I, I kind of, Kevin and I both mentioned that is, is you know see what they're vibing with see yeah. what they're doing make their actions important in in the storytelling because Absolutely. then it's all riffing off of their choices yeah. and their the yeah. the results of of things that they've done yeah. um, and i think that makes it much more interesting overall for any player absolutely absolutely 100 percent. it's and, not it's and, not the my game is the gm and you guys need to just follow this plot line no lean into what they're being part of yeah i i always try to design my games for my players and around my players, what, what they were interested in, what they wanted to do, things I knew they would find fun and exciting as opposed to, I think this would be very challenging. So, I mean, sometimes, but I mean... But just to answer your question, that's how I yeah. would deal with that if, if the player doesn't seem like they're vibing with certain things. Well, you know, work on that. Have a discussion with them, chat with them. All right, the, la- the last major... Thing, wow, this has gone on an hour and a half and it does not feel like an hour and a half already. This has been some good stuff. Um, is is the idea of you know some people okay let's go back to D. people know i think it's b2 
we know the hex crawl. We know the the West March style game. We we know those rifts doesn't have inherently built in to the game itself necessarily a hex crawl, but you could absolutely do it. So so if you got yeah. you've got a group of players who kind of want to traverse across, since a lot of it's unknown, how can how can game masters set up a sort of hex crawl for rifts without you know. Well, no, just how can they do that? Let's just leave it there. Like, let's keep it open ended. How, how how can they set up a hex crawl for rifts to get say from one point to the next? So I've done it. Um, I use the, the the maps by my Pinnacle, um, mm -hmm. which are great, and we actually you know have quite a few copies and we sell them sometimes. Um, again, I wrote uh, a good number of pages in here to do literally that, and that's from using it in my own game. So if you do want to do something that's literally a hex crawl, there's rules for it already. Um, it's not built into the core of all of our books, but it's kind of an add-on that condenses a lot of stuff, the best stuff that uh, Kevin and, and other writers have already put together so far. Um, I would highly suggest that, but if you want, I, I think that there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of information out there on how to build a hex map for just certain regions. So if you want to do a hex crawl in a specific region of Rifts, um, I, I say go for it. Yeah, it, it, it's it's like any other setting. I uh, I was never big on, on hex maps myself. Uh, I'm more of a theater of the mind kind, kind of guy. Uh, and that tends to be my, my style of, of gaming. But I mean, I would draw maps and overall thing and say, you're, you're here, you know, you're here and you're trying to get to there or this or that. And then when I got to very specific locations, uh, especially like dungeon crawls or in a case of rifts, perhaps, Hey, what, and that's the other cool thing is in the middle of that wilderness, you could find like a crashed alien spaceship or next to a town of DBs or, or, or an opening into the ground and it's a tunnel and it leads to some pre rifts, uh, complex, whether it's an old city or whether it's an old, you know, military thing. And whenever you got into that kind of dungeon crawl ish situation, I would have, I would create myself very much a, a map uh, and walk people through it. Um, and that was more for my reference than, than even theirs. That way I would, and I would plot out everything that's there in a plausible way. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, anything you would use in any role playing game is applicable in riffs it's just whatever works for you i i have a excellent game master friend uh, jim brown who likes to make these big he's got those big uh like like miniature settings and stuff for dungeons and things and whether it's for riffs or whether it's for his you know fantasy stuff he plays a ton of riffs and you know if you want to use miniatures or, or markers or and walk people through an actual physical terrain you know whatever works for you and your in your players and that's the thing about role playing it's so personal mm -hmm. uh, everyone has a different approach a different like or dislike and uh, everyone's approach is the right way <laughs> It is. If your players are having fun, that's always told people, right? I ran into, from time to time, I run into people who will tell me, oh, man, I've been playing this all wrong for, for a year or for years, uh, plural. And it's like, were your players having fun? Yeah, we had great games. You know, we got all kinds of adventures and wonderful memories. I'm like, then you were doing it right. Yeah, it was right at your table. And yep. and in the end, that's what matters. Now, what, what we hate are people who say that what's right at my table has to be right at your table too. Now yeah. you're just being a dick. Don't do that. Yeah, that's our job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's it's the creators and the critics. It's it's our job to tell you what's right and wrong, not yours. Calm down. Get all uppity. Don't do that. Jeez. It's a joke. It's a joke. I'm not uh, joking. <laughs> he's not, not joking. <laughs> well, that, that, so, so I'm in the middle. I'm always a hybrid person. It seems when it comes to philosophy when role playing, it's like uh, I like hex crawls, but I like theater of the mind. I don't like hardcore hex crawls, but I also need some sort of something. You know yeah, that, it's, like, it's that, not that larping uh, here. Yeah. What's that? It's 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 not larping either. You know right, I mean? right. I mean, it's, yeah. so I'm always in the middle. Um, and I, I'll throw one last little thing out there is sometimes maybe you give them a choice if, if they want. Like I had a campaign where I was like, hey, you can get this riverboat and go to this town and then you can, you know, 
do this and travel here. You could try and do a teleport or rift spell, or you can go through the, you know, cut through the wilderness yourself and not try and wait for all these other things and do all that other stuff. Um, and give them, sometimes that's fun. You can give them the choice. And then now you can go build a little, maybe just do a small hex crawl to start out and, you know, take a, a Google Maps picture of that area and mm -hmm. throw a hex over it and put some ranges on it and write down notes of stuff that's in c4 and d12 or whatever and then go for it and have some fun and try it out and just use skill rolls i mean let's just it's it is that it can be that simple well, right you don't need a whole oh. like system that someone else has boiled down like like i did with this book for instance but yeah just have fun with it and try different things out yeah and, and we're not That's saying like. and we're not saying that Too every much. time you got to travel from a to b that you have to play out that whole adventure. Right. Sometimes there's reason to say, you know what, you went through, it took you four days, nothing happened. You linked up with a caravan, whatever. Yeah, yeah. you, you, you yeah. arrived just fine. And, yeah, and if for, for, for for people who, who don't like hex crawls, you know, like, oh, C4, D12, oh, you sank my Leyline like Walker. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want any of that, you know? Like, whatever, I don't want, then fine. Absolutely fine. Personally, right. I, I only use... Uh, uh mini uh you know miniatures or markers or whatever for very large army battles or or very very specific you know really close quarter battles where the where the terrain is going to be the deciding factor stuff like that so everyone knows exactly where they are you know but right. other than that no no the theater of the mind thing works just fine you know that's that my default perfect. too, but yeah. sometimes changing it up can be really interesting, right? And you do, sometimes players and game masters don't know what they like until they try something. So, you know, that's yep. just why I'm throwing that out. And, and, and I, I like theater of the mind because I, I'm big into improv and, and going where my players want to go. So maybe they bring up something I wasn't anticipating, but I really like it. And so now I'm weaving it into, and suddenly, yeah, there's a cave where there wasn't one two seconds ago. Well, uh, you know, there's a cave and down in the cave is God knows what. And, you know, you take them on the adventure because, oh, yeah, that was a great idea. And I think they'll have fun with it. <laughs> that's, that actually actually made, made me think of something. Uh, this is uh, players have this problem sometimes where where they they just smell their own farts too much. And uh, <laughs> they 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 uh, travel this this route. They've traveled it before. But, hey, that, that's a cave that wasn't there before. Let's go investigate. But if you have if you have a guide, he'll be like, "What are you stupid? No, a mysterious cave that wasn't there yesterday. Let's go investigate. How are you still alive? Yeah, How is your mother impressive. not crying every day, <laughs> lamenting the idiocy of her son? Come on, man, wake up! But the, the, they'll go do it and then be angry at me that there was a cave in and they're trapped and they die. Like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> dumb, you know. I, I don't know what to say." <laughs> and I do want to point out rifts. If there was any setting where you can kind of like teleport from A to B, yeah. it's it's rifts depending on the availability of a of leyline nexus or a mage that can yeah I mean in that way. I was going to mention that too. I don't want to drag on this the segment too long, but you know if you got someone who's playing a shifter and has really delved into like teleportation and, and and magic and for those kind of things don't be surprised if maybe that doesn't mix well with with you know this really detailed exploration thing you want to do when he's like well i'm just going to teleport to the target hex and then you know and then i'm going to rift us to a completely different map now because that's what i do right so so you know you get a lot of this has another case right. against the shifter yeah right thank you thank you sean <laughs> You Another black mark for the, for the already, already pockmarked shifter class. <laughs> just, just for the record, the first episode was supposed to include why Heathen Dog hates the shifter and have them uh, 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 say, no, no, no the shifter, you know, what's right good right about now. it? But Heathen Dog apparently couldn't actually come up with any reasons for that. I'm just saying. Well, that's one more. Let's, let's, let's write that down. Right. <laughs> uh, we got a super chat shifter. here that's $20. Well, 19 But Kevin, I go... Go back, uh, Kevin. I go back to when you were doing art for Judges Guild and try and get folks interested in your RPG. I've purchased and followed you over your whole career, ups and downs. Thank you, Kevin. Sean is great, by the way. Heart okay. emoji, hundred percent. Thank you, and America. Thank you. Glad you've been along for this uh, very long journey. Sean Not long enough that. for some of us. Oh, <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to hit some chat now, comments that came up either on our Discord uh, or uh, that we started in chat. Uh, I'm going to hit the Discord ones first, else I will forget. 
Uh, not as many as uh, as I thought, so that shouldn't make this too long. Uh, first one is regarding travel. You already answered this to some degree, but let's just make sure we do since they took the time to answer the question. Since Rifts has many vehicles that can traverse lar large tracts of land, if not the whole width of the United States in a day or less, I think we already covered that, but what is your favorite way to slow characters down so they have to interact with the wilderness environment and other tangent adventures? Well, if it's not a flying vehicle, don't mix top speed with overland travel speed. Yeah. yeah. Like, just don't, because it's not what's going on. Um, that's number one thing I would say. Yeah, and we didn't talk about what happens when you go up into the air. Or you're oh, that's visible. the next question, by the way. So, <laughs> Yeah. Um, again, I have sections in here. Overland travel, air travel, water travel notes about the... the the can you hold that book up again so people get a good clear picture of which one that is? Look at that. Tomorrow uh, Legion Field Manual. There, there yeah. may or may not have been a couple of comments in chat about uh wow, Sean's waving around his book so much he might get a rotator cuff injury. You know? But oh, I don't know. I'm a writer, so for you. If you don't, if you don't like it, go watch another go watch another video. But I'm the guest here. So yeah. if you don't like it, take a hike. But and yeah, anybody I'm said that I'm just a blue star really rate wrote to fix this problem for my own game and for Savage oh. First players that every Rift player could use. God damn, that was a good uh, answer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um so let's lead into the next one then, which is how dangerous are the skies of Rift's Earth? Given the fact that a dragon in flight might be able to see you from miles away, to say nothing of most vehicles possessing radar, which doesn't work on the ground, having a range of miles, how dangerous is sky travel versus ground travel? Very. And remember, um, you know, well, I'll let you talk about that first. Yeah. Uh, either way, I mean, you seem like you're fired up on it. I am fired up on it. I wrote a whole thing <laughs> about it, it. But no, 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 no. no. <laughs> what book is that in, Sean? What's that? <laughs> what book is that it. in? I can wave it around again if you want. Please do. That's fine. Do it. Uh, do it. I'll wave it. There, there go. we go. <laughs> Having a <laughs> flag in the background. Stars. It has some answers. I mean, it's li I, like literally this entire discussion that, is in that stuff. book. I know. Yeah. 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 Um, it's different rules. But the concept, it's skill, it, but it's skill roles. Just swap yeah. in a palladium appropriate skill role. That's all. I mean, the skills are the same name most of the time. Survival, navigation, yeah, right. The, the, the rest of it is like random tables and whatnot. So right. it'll fit anywhere. Yeah. So so yeah, exactly. I, I mean, and, and let's just <laughs> air travel is bad enough. Water travel is even more fraught. But but air travel is extremely dangerous. That's why when you read about like the coalition sending supplies to Triax and the NGR, they're doing it with you know the deaths had, you know, gunships and whole escorts, right? Uh, nuclear powered flying across at high altitude. So it's kind of like a and, real military convoy. Yeah. Cause it's through a combat zone because it's dangerous. Right. So um, that the same thing happens. And yeah, there's remember dragons is one thing and rifts is full of all kinds of crap um, and teleporting and flying enemies and things that'll track you and follow you or weird spirits or, or, um, poltergeists and stuff. I mean, sorcerers are going to call lightning and fly. Right. And maybe they don't like you flying over their region of, of, uh, the Federation of magic or this tract of wilderness that they claim, like they claim to, I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that. Um, pterodactyls, that's a great one. Lynn Sorrell. That. Yeah, Lynn Sorrell. Yeah. So, no, there's tons of stuff like that it can be really scary for air travel. Um, so air travel is one of those things where it's like high risk, high reward. Right. Um, and where are you going to land? Do you know where you're going? Can you well, recognize it? Where you can land is, is your predetermined destination. If you have an emergency, well, then you're hitting some trees. Do you have a map or photograph from the air of the place you're going? I mean, one East just doesn't take me there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll take you around there, but th th is there an of airfield to land on? <laughs> I, 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 I was going to mention that when we were talking about land travel, even so, you get lost, you lose your wilderness scout. But this applies especially to air travel, where you're going much faster and covering uh, a lot more territory. Is it's a lot harder to hit that target of town or city X. If you're off by a little bit, the longer your journey, the more you're going to end up away. Well, the navigation will have that baked into it. it. I'll, I'll tell you, I had um, we we I played a, a game where we had uh, a techno wizardry flying boat was the 
core means of transportation for the group. And they would follow along ley lines, but they would intentionally follow along ley lines that traverse near rivers and stuff like that. So they could follow the landmarks to where they're going. They, they took their time. They flew at low altitude to not attract too much attention and also to take their time and make sure they weren't constantly lost. Yeah, actually, uh, it, uh, there was a Superman comic. I forget which one. Uh, when when he when he first started out being Superman and he had to fly all over the country and stuff like that to to save people, he would at first before he knew where he was at all times, he would follow highways. Mm. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. It makes total exactly. sense. Yeah, and it 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 wasn't a big Im impediment for him because he could fly so fast. But you know, he needed to follow the highways to figure out where where he was and how to how to get to where he was going. Sure. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We don't think about that. And what about, you know, we talked about ley lane storms affect on people on the ground. What the In hell? the air, it's worse. Oh, my God. Oh, well, you, You're just going to yeah. crash and die. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Or, or appear into another world <laughs> without even realizing. You're just driving through the storm and the clouds open up. And where the hell am I? Why are there three? Now there's two I, mean, I made it Everyone's to Egypt, but it's heads. only to ancient Egypt. <laughs> there you go. Go, go. go back through time. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. What? And yeah, I think people say, like, well, I'll just get, get an airplane. What airplane? Who's selling an airplane? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You have airfields, right? Where are you going? A couple the whole of million group, credits. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yeah, you, you, you know, are you, yeah, if you spin out of control and crash at, you know, 250 miles an hour uh, with your Samus, I think the pilot's going to have a rough time. Well, and that's why a lot of the power armor, you know, they don't have high altitudes because it's not going to really help you. There's no GPS to guide you. you yeah, good luck communicating. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's the, think about all these different layers of problems. Cause um, there's high tech and yet it's a low tech ish environment. So, you know, it, it's, it's not the world we know. Um, even though there's things we recognize about it and that creates its own set of perils. Yeah. It, it, to give an example, you could sort of think of it like, you know, you if you're a sci-fi fan, right? Like, if you you have these scenes where like um, uh, a, an astronaut will inevitably do some some EVA, they get out of the vehicle, they and they jump towards some destination, right? But any little tiny tiny miscalculation or variation on their trajectory means they could miss the target and end up just flying off into deep space <laughs> and you're dead, right? Or into an atmosphere or a sun or whatever, right? And it's kind of like that. So air travel and risk could kind of, you could kind of think of it like that, especially like high speed, high altitude is it's kind of like, well, I'm throwing a dart at this tiny dartboard on the other side of the gymnasium. And if I miss, who knows where we are, right? <laughs> and we could all die. Yeah, yeah this is I, actually, I actually ran into that. Uh, there, there, there was one uh, right, Robotech right. game oh, that, that turned into a Rifts game, and me <laughs> and and my and my Veritech got got uh, put into Rifts Earth. And I was trying to fly around. I had I had no satellite, no no GPS, nothing. And I was flying around trying to find this place. I crisscrossed the country like three times because I kept missing it. I'm, well, I'm just I'm just lucky protoculture isn't gas and I didn't have to run out, you know, because I definitely would have run out of gas. Well, and there point. are a few major cities in Rift's Earth. And let's say yeah. you just come screaming into Chai Town, Hughes Town, you know, other places like that. They're going to have some medium and long range missiles set up on radars waiting for stuff to come oh, yeah. in screaming into their airspace. So unless they know you're coming or you're going you're to be communicating clearly, that could be a problem, too. Right. Well, in Game Masters, oh, I, I was shot at once. I, I I was shot at once from a from a ground to air missile, but I was like ten thousand feet up already. I just gunned it, and a, a Veritech can go Mach two point five, Mach three easy. I just outran the missile. It it didn't reach me before it ran out of gas, but that just made me more lost. <laughs> exactly. 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 What I'm gonna say here's an easy one, game master. So I don't care who you are flying, dragon, mage, power armor, sky cycle, whatever. You're flying across this sea of green nothing but trees oh look there's an opening there's smoke this must be my the city i'm supposed to be and you land and it's the wrong freaking place <laughs> and you gotta ask yeah ask directions <laughs> hey where's 
where's uh where's comfortville no 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 this, this is not comfortville this 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 is shitty town but you know, then you're, gonna get, you're gonna get minnesota style directions that don't say hey go take this road take that road okay you gotta go down there to the bar okay not the third bar the second bar then you take a left and then once you take that left you go down to the tall telephone pole don't go to the short one the short one will take you to the, the there are no Jones's arnold <laughs> What's yeah, that? Exactly, well, no, yeah. but, but you you get what I'm saying. But my like, point is, right, it gets worse because it's like, well, go to the short hill, not the tall hill. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> <laughs> look for the big oak. How big is it? They all look pretty big. Yeah, right. So it's got the face on the side of it. Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> now you look at every <laughs> oak. Which one's got the? <laughs> all right. What's uh, the next question? Next question is yeah. So this one's a simple one, but it's not as simple as I think it's a deviously simple one. So how do you handle food and water needs while you're in the wild? Well, again, that, that's playtesting, and that's where your SDC weapons comes in because, you know, everyone always thinks, I think, when you're hunting, I'm, I'm in the wilderness and I'm hunting, and everyone right away goes to deer, wild boar, but really you're probably hunting raccoon and rabbit yeah, and uh, other squirrel. <laughs> and, you know, you're going to just completely atomize that with your MDC blaster. Um, so you need your SDC weapon. You need to know how to forage. You need to know, uh, identify plants, but that are edible. Um, if you have fishing as, as uh, heathen dog mentioned earlier, you know, you got your fishing hook and, you know, you, as long as you're by a stream or a lake or something, you should, but I mean, that could take hours. I've been out fishing. I know about you guys, but sometimes the fish are biting and sometimes they ain't. And, uh, and yeah, that delays your trip by three hours or five hours. Um, you know, and, and we don't go into a lot of the more mundane stuff like, and, and I think both of you guys touched on this earlier, like having the cooking skill so that you can cook your food. So it doesn't have bacteria or parasites or any number yeah, of other. Yeah. Last thing you want is food poisoning while you're in the middle of the winter. Wait, right. you, just, just putting it on fire and making it brown doesn't count. Nope. No, no, oh. it doesn't. And and I, I want to tell you now that there, there there really should be more prominent rules for putting on and taking off armor, especially when when you know you have the runs and you're in the wilderness. <laughs> you're not you're not going 10 feet because it, it takes you five minutes to get in and five minutes to get out of your power armor. Yeah. And and you have to crap every 30 minutes. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't want to tell you, but uh, oh, roll, 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 you crap your pants, yeah. but no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> in, in the olden days, I mean, dysentery not only was it inconvenient and awful, but it, it killed people left and right. The Oregon Trail, I was just gonna say that the Oregon Trail, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'm not going to ask the next question on here because it's not directly related, and this has been crazy. I love it, though. And this is the thing about this, guys, and I'm going to read Super Chats in a moment, but uh, this topic usually covers an entire book. We don't cover an entire book in two hours. It's been two hours. There's so many ideas that you can come up with, but I hope that the conversation so far has helped you come up with those ideas, help you work with the players, help you think outside of just – what what you might know this second yeah you might have to read a book you might have to research something not that you necessarily have to some people that's poo poo words but I, at least understand that what you're going into isn't just walking across the street as if you had a nice paved road you're right. climbing hills you're stumbling on rocks i was playing in bears game yesterday I tripped and fell busted up my knee took half my hit points away from me <laughs> like like that yes well, and the last thing is, is, is I'll say is, you know, they said, how do you, you know, track all this stuff? Well, either track it or don't. I, that's my suggestion. Again, take, you know, take the top two or three items because that's the core of if you want to do survival or survival horror, you have, there has to be limited resources. So what are the limited resources? And then track those relentlessly and ignore the rest of it, right? Until it becomes important. Like say, we have good access to water because we're following the river. But then if you're not, track start tracking water relentlessly right so that's that and that's who else is following the river as well a uh, lots of animals and even anybody that wants to survive oh, sure. right. is following the water but but just as far as like yeah. you know what do we track you sure. know that that's kind of my answer there is either do or don't right and kind of lean into it that way all right um 
couple things I want to mention before we, uh, as we get into super chats here. If you guys have not had the opportunity to do this, and this is talking to the audience out there, you guys really need to check out uh, the Glitter Boys episodes talking with Kevin about the history of uh, Palladium books. Uh, that stuff has been absolutely fantastic. And apparently one of those weirdos is from Minnesota as well. So, hey, we can have a good old up north talk one day, you know. Um, but uh, uh, I live in Alabama now. I, I, I speak English somewhat. But anyway, but yeah, check those out. Uh, check out the Glitter Boys. I forget what the actual name of the channel is because it's not Glitter Boys. That's the name of the show. I apologize. I just don't know. But Kevin, you were saying that uh, that uh, you guys for Palladium Books are going to start doing something similar to this soon. We'll start releasing it soon. Yeah, yeah I was, I, I've I've uh, already done something like eighteen or twenty interviews with a gentleman named uh, J M Defoggy. And, uh, yeah, we're doing a more or less chronological discussion of uh, the history of Palladium books, uh, starting with my, my sort of just touching. Well, it's my, more like the history of Kevin Sambita is how it starts out. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 the first episode touches on some of my work as uh, Me, a printing our... press and my garage. <laughs> not quite that bad well, but, and it, it, it started out very differently actually uh, kevin was was actually a big artist right in the industry um, a lot of people don't know that i didn't know that until i i, I uh well i don't know about big artists but i was an artist and, and did a lot of work for for judges guild in particular and they and, did all the dungeons and dragons adventure material for a number of years and the sole license for, for judges guild yeah and then uh, did some traveler stuff and some other things. I I, I was supposed to originally uh, do the art for uh, um, BattleTech, uh, but they, they wouldn't pay me what I felt was was worth it because I I love drawing mechs, but oh my god. So I'd love to see the comparison it. between you and Luce because uh, I really like Luce's drawings. The the kind of the, even with the little, you could see some of the extra line perspective yeah. lines that he kept in there and so forth. Uh, the newer stuff, I'm not so much a fan of, but I love Luce's old drawings. So I'd love to see the difference between what you were doing versus what he did. Well, I didn't do anything because they uh, they they uh, they wouldn't pay me what I felt I needed. And uh, but I mean I was I was known at first a, 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 as an art uh, as an artist and uh, uh, in fact for for gosh probably the first fifteen years of my career I would have people coming up and going I loved your art in Judges Guild you were one of the best artists and I'm like thank you <laughs> um, and, and that was partly because they I only actually worked for them for like six months but, oh wow. And I, and I talk about this, but but I had to do seventy two illustrations a month, and then they reprinted <laughs> it's like things. porn. It's like yeah. a six month career, you have a thousand movies. Right, <laughs> a six months career, you have seventy two seventy two uh, pieces of art that's thrown out there. That's pretty funny. It, it, it was crazy, and uh, uh, and then they would reprint things over and over and over and over for like the next however long Judges Guild was in print. They just kept heck the reprints come out. My stuff is still there. Uh, nice. or on the covers or back covers and i'm like what the hell <laughs> but you know it's it's out there so we, we talk about that and uh and then we go into the various you know books chronologically and uh the people involved and that kind of thing and uh it's been a blast it's been really nice uh to go through it in a very methodical way uh don't get me wrong i love what i do with you guys and with the glitter boys <laughs> um but it's a little more you know, off the cuff, uh, and, and we go off on tangents uh, more. Yeah, I really wanted this series to happen, and so I was like, Kevin, when you do this one, you have to tell this story and this story, and you need to tell the whole story, right? Um, mm -hmm. And and so, and Kevin really got it once we yeah. once they got through a few. Well, episodes. I felt funny about it, you know, because it's like, really, people want to know about my life. But yes, but, they do. Kevin. But yeah. yeah, and and what what kind of got me over that is I I sat back and realized. Well, first of all, I was having a lot of fun, and, and JM is a great interviewer. He, asks, he really knows Palladium stuff like you guys, so he asks really good questions. And, and we do an outline before the, the, the episode, so we have, you know, our, our little... Wait, we can do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, I just sat back and went, man, if I could hear stories about how they started or why they did something from Gary Gygax or Steve Jackson or Keith Parkinson. And the list goes on and on and on Dave Arneson. And I would love to hear that. Um, 
you know, Greg Stafford. I would love to see them talking about what they had in mind when they were doing things and why they did things and how they interacted with other people in the industry. And um, cause otherwise, like I said, it felt kind of weird to do, you know, interviews about my, my history of palladium, but uh, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. And, and it's reminded me that I've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> when, when can people expect to start seeing these pop on the palladium books, YouTube channel uh, this month? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. We'll be, and we'll be announcing it in the in the newsletter, and we'll probably do I think one every two weeks, and we'll yeah. it'll be announced in our in our weekly update along with, alongside the the dropping the new episodes. Yeah, so. yeah, there might even be one popping up by the end of uh, this coming week. So yeah, we'll see it okay. so, so very soon. Yeah, excellent. So. Well, chat's already tell. I mean, we're all looking forward to that. So that's going to be some good stuff. Awesome. Um, let's hit some super chats here, and then I'll ask you if you guys want to jump into the next topic. Two hours is up. We're done. Game over. Um, uh, CBK, <laughs> uh, CBK Ply, thank you for the super sticker. I can't see it there. I probably saw it when it was over there, though, but I appreciate the $5. Thank you very much. And by the way, thank you to everybody who super chatted. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Francois de Rocher. I wrote a, a series of blog posts on this for them. Apparently, this is about. Tra I, sorry, it's a while ago now. Uh, apparently, this is on the the survival uh, and um, obviously wilderness aspects of it. But if you have not checked out his blog post, which I didn't write down, so I, and I always get it wrong because he's not rogue scholar. <laughs> it's a scholarly adventures. That's what it is. Uh, check out his uh, blog post, scholarly adventures, and he's got a lot of good stuff when it comes There's to podium and riffs. Stuff. Check it out. There's a whole library of stuff. You know, in, in, in regard to wilderness stuff, uh, you know, I, we we're focused on riffs, so I, I I only really mentioned riffs books, but there's some good stuff in uh, the Belgar wastelands and mm -hmm. Insloth jungles, uh, and, and some other other books. Okay, he says that was out of context. Well, I don't remember my memory. Dude, I'm 51. I don't remember things that happened two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, thanks for the great show. Always great to see Sean and Kevin. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you, guys. Apparently, we have a... Okay, he was spamming our comments, apparently. <laughs> I'm curious about Sean Kevin's response. The apparent urbanization and interlinking the new books seem to imply over the vast wilderness the main books demonstrates. That's kind of my point with SDC and MDC when we get into that topic as well. I don't think there's an implied urbanization and interlinking I, I think it just you do see big cities you just have to understand that those are outside the norm yeah and if it's not listed in one of the books it's probably nothing there you know like yeah. maybe a little a little town right yeah okay so it's so, an infantry officer you're not running through forests in daylight let alone at night yeah fair yeah and then Luyari Red Law Dogs, but thanks again, Law Dog, for the twenty dollars. CPK Ply wow. sends another, another just five, five dollars. Thank you, <laughs> appreciate for, that. for no reason, just to throw five bucks at me. I feel like a stripper, and I'm validated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, full metal range. So, so what Riffs book is the Riffs Wilderness Survival Guide? I mean, maybe we need to make one. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> the closest well, like, right you know, now. It'd be pretty it's, easy. It's, it's, you you just you just cherry pick all the survival stuff you have in all the other books and just put it into one into yeah, one publication. Compendium. Bob's your uncle, you know. Yeah, Basically, uh, a free book idea. for you. There you go. Uh, you wanted Strider, but all you could afford was Smeagol. That was a yeah, funny. That's, one. that's that's when we were you're hiring a guide. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to be careful. Either either you 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 choose the wrong one, ends up being a Smeagol, or you don't have enough money and all you can afford is a Smeagol, and you just you just end up being bumped. Or you don't realize the creepy guy is Strider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he gives off the creepy vibe, but vibe do doesn't mean incompetent. You know, that's that's another thing. Yeah. Uh, this is is H Dog an Archie plant? Yes, I I I am I am the only male Shimmerian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a He Marian. <laughs> That's what I oh, I didn't see what you did there. <laughs> Thank you again yeah. for the super chat. Law Dog says, as Flady One said, you want to try to brawl, you can afford a Smeagol. Yeah, we started that one. That was a good one. But uh, thank you, Law Dog, for the five dollars. Been a really good supporter of our channel. Insane UPS driver. By the way, I worked for UPS for two weeks, hiring and firing people as a, as an intern. And wow, yes, insane UPS drivers just 
just may as well just say UPS driver. Uh, I wish Kevin and Palladium would put a forum for finding games with other Palladium players. It's hard and niche to find Rift's Palladium game. Is that is that their responsibility, though? I mean, yeah, shouldn't that I mean, be more of a community on, yeah. responsibility? There's some great communities online that I've seen, um, and it's going to f- sound funny because uh, one I'll play is SavageRifts.com, but they actually, um, a big portion of their players actually just play Palladium. So mm-hmm. um, if you want to, that's a great place to go, and you can check out their forums. They do, they are very active. You can either play by post or, you know, organize games with groups. Um, and then, um, again, this, you know, this comes from, part of this is a com- uh, community that I helped you know, foster, but uh, Sav- the Savage Rifts Facebook group has a lot of just Palladium players um, as well. So um, even some of the moderators just play Palladium, but they, they love Rifts, right? So if you um, are looking for people to, to meet up and play games with, those are some great places that I would suggest. Um, yeah, we're not really in the business of setting up specific connection forums and dating websites. So uh, <laughs> role play dating. I just say I can't Sean, meet my Palladium Sean, love there. Sean Robertson's gonna get a website. <laughs> yeah, I Palladium singles, the greatest role player of all time. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's gonna be those those uh, late eighties, early nineties, like like phone sex commercials. You know, <laughs> <laughs> wow. a, 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 a gay master with a rose in his mouth, leaning back, you know, shirt open. It's like come to my table. Okay, You'll visuals, have a good time. visuals. Stop! I know, I know. I took that too far. I couldn't help it. I had to do it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's see. Uh, uh, you can rift in. Oh, I didn't start this. You must start this one. You can rift in Min May and she'll it, sing yeah. a song and make peace. Oh my God, I hate Min May. No, no. See, that I start it because I want Bio Kidder to know you were that close to getting a timeout for 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 just saying the word Min May. All right, just saying the word Min May. You're that close. Min putting Min Min May May on that purpose was in a rift adventure shame on you shame on you we shame. can't defeat it let's sing Ugh. we will win <laughs> how do i ban kevin <laughs> uh so will hex crawl be brought into a palladium book officially probably not it seems like there might be some demand. We'll think about it. Thanks. Well, I mean, we we honestly listen to you guys a lot. I mean, the reason I wrote a lot of the rules that I did for the Savage Rift stuff was same kind of questions from 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 other portions of the community. Yeah, we so. we have a lot of different plans and different ideas that we're kicking around. Um, you know, it just it's it's taking us uh, a little while to implement some of these things. But we, yeah, we we hear you. We listen. And uh, uh, when I say we have big things planned for the future i mean we've got a lot of cool stuff for the future just to start so hang with us and you you never know uh kevin sabito one of my lifetime gaming heroes and sean the modern day kevin love and blessings to you both heart thank you america oh thank you very much that was right before the super chat (laughs) that was sent that we already read but uh, thanks again for the super chat appreciate that thank you and a uh, law dog pops on in here. Remember, in the skies of Rift's Earth, everything for miles around can see you. That should be a terrifying yeah. thought. Yeah, yeah. Everything is wilderness, right? So everything on the ground has concealment, whereas you in the sky do not. I mean, and there's TV hillbillies. Exactly. I was just going to say that. Uh, let, let, let's not even talk about, about all all the damn hillbillies who have who have this MDC rifle and just going to shoot you for fun. Just like, I wonder if I can hit it, Joe. Go get him, Tex. And then you're falling out of the sky. Why? Be- be- because of, of, of some straw-headed asshat with a with three X's on a jug that he's been taking too many swigs of. That's the only reason. Suck. <laughs> he the dog, I, I have some work for you to do right now. All the people who are shouting for more splicers, please ban them all. <laughs> He doesn't like splicers at all. He like Not that. at all. Not at all. Um, anyway, uh, love your games. Any chance we'll see an expanded treatment for MindWorks and Eastern Europe, as we have for Archie 3 and CyberWorks? I, again, you know, it, he won't let me say anything that we talk about that we have yeah, in mind. They, they, this so, is not supposed to be about this. Anything uh, can happen. <clears throat> we, again, we have all kinds of plans. See, he can't ideas. even talk. We, 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 we would love to on him. Like that. When exactly... 
we can't say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that uh, the, the Savage Rifts team is working on Europa, and there's a lot of extra lore. It kind of like the other Savage Rifts books where we fill in a lot of the cracks and the crevices between different factions and groups that may have been mentioned in various books. Um, but uh, so there's there's a lot of stuff that Kevin and I have been working on them yep. with to, to – to, just clarify and expand some material there. So that would be the the thing that's coming up the soonest um, that's already been announced um, that's going to have more information for that region of the world. And, and uh, is official. Exactly really cool. And it is official. It'll be very cool. So Nice. Okay. Well, we got through all of that. I'm telling you, all you splicers people. No, I know, so I, I, we did a video they're, on splicers years ago. On you, can see, you can see what the reasons for that are. Um, but uh, with with that said, do you guys want to? Do we want to move on to the to the next topic? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Okay, awesome. So what I will do then in this case is uh, do, 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 one more time mention that the current horror sale I do have in the description now. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out the current horror sale from a Palladium Books. And if you're watching this video much after that time, well, I'm sure there's a sale going on. Check it out. The other thing I just want to throw out because we can't throw out enough is. Please, if you've backed the TMNT Kickstarter and you haven't registered on BackerKit, we have a link in our um, weekly updates. We can probably, if you guys can throw it in somewhere attached to this video um, so that people can go and register. It's called a BackerKit survey, but really it's it's a survey of the information we need to send you your stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do it, we can't send you your stuff. We can't, we don't have any, we've, we've sent out like 20 emails already through and direct messages and messages, um, emails through our, um, uh, was it everything MailChimp? So yep. I always want to say it backwards. So we sent out so many messages, but we don't have your phone numbers and stuff yep. and addresses. We can't just come hunting you down for that information. <laughs> we want you to be able to get your hundreds of dollars worth of TMNT awesomeness. So please go register on um, our backer kit. Well, and because exclusives are so very exclusive, Extremely if we exclusive. don't have your information in advance, it's possible if you reach out to us after everything starts to ship that we won't have that item that you very much wanted. So we need you to fill out um, what they call a survey. But I call it registration because it, it really is, is registration. Yeah, it's actually like your registration with your address and everything. Yeah. So, um, And we will be finalizing shipment details uh, when shipping actually occurs because of the way the nature of shipping right now. Um, but, but yeah, please, just I can't get that out enough for, for fans. Everybody trolling me about splicers now, uh, which is funny. Uh, with that said, you also said that folks can still pre-order TMNT. Yes, that's as, as well. You can go to the our back, our backer kit website. Just search TMNT um, or TMNT and other strangeness on, on backer kit if you don't have a handy link, and you should be able to find it really quickly. And uh, yeah, you can still pre-order. We have a lot of people asking about that as well. So just want to get the word out there. You can get a lot of really cool stuff. You can get it at a lower price than it's going to be at, re at full retail. Um, so I want to make sure that people that um, you know budgets are tight right now that you can get the stuff that you want to get and be able to play it as soon as possible, as soon as as we can ship it. So. And these books are amazing. We, we were at Granite State Comic Con and uh, met a lot of the creators there, uh, Kevin Eastman and Luis Degado and... Uh, Freddie Williams is there. Yeah, Freddie Williams and, and a bunch of folks. And they got to see more of our pages and they're like, holy crap, this is going to be amazing. These books are gorgeous. And we're like, yep. And we had a lot of people that were just Turtles fans. They don't even play role-playing games. Yep. They're like, I want this book. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful collection of stuff. So. Yeah. I'm really waiting for my black, white, and red cover. <laughs> great. All right, well, let, let me pop up this thing here so we can talk about the, the next segment. And we will repeat all of this uh, in the next video as well, just to remind folks, because I know you're going to get lost in the conversation. But uh, please like, subscribe, and share for more Kevin and Sean. Remember, these... These specific gamer talk videos, that's what we're calling them, uh, these are about games. So we're, I'm purposely not going to try to talk too much about upcoming books and so forth. Obviously, if you super chat, we'll do it. Uh, we'll have Kevin and Sean on for more of that, hopefully in the future. But we really want to pick their brains on gaming, and that's what all these gamer talks are for. So if you're looking forward to more, how does Kevin do this in his game? How does Sean do that in his game? How does Palladium expect or want or think is fun for me to do something in my game? Well, that's what these conversations are about, and I hope you stick around for the next video.